Hello and welcome to the Captain's Table, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Berserker 01, Batman Shelley, your humble host and space bartender here at the Astro Pub and your host here at the Captain's Table. This is a podcast, the second oldest podcast in Star Citizen, um, where we talk, uh, we bring people from the Star Citizen community together to talk about the game, news, updates, theory crafting, you name it. We've been doing this for since 2016. Um, I have a list of thumbnails that I've that I've saved from then, and it's it's, it's set into like um, folders with with dates. That's how I know how long I'm doing it. Like, ah, oh, since 2016. So who's, who's the oldest? Who's the oldest? It's uh, it is relay. Uh, relay station, the okay. relay station. Mine would technically be oldest if I didn't burn out on it. Yeah, the yeah, um, that's the trick, right? Space Bros would be all kinds if, if mm -hmm. it was still going. Also, I just realized that um, Stim and I should have been on the show last week because we are both on the like the extreme sides of the. You just, well, you just you just kind of creator. Extreme sides of what? Oh, oh, oh he's back. Oh. No, I'm not. He's <laughs> <laughs> He's become a mime. Uh, Proof that he is Dracula. <laughs> it's been so long that Darionator actually has gray hair now. Um, we're waiting for for, for Dar Darionator to come back. But while Darionator is coming back, let's introduce our guests for today. Let's start with you, S Mr. Stim Citizen. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? Thanks, Paul. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Stim Citizen. I am the... Uh, one of the, the founders, co-founders of the Yacht Club, Bar Citizen. Uh, so it is a, um, a weekly podcast, uh, not one of the first two oldest, but certainly uh, close in the list, not far behind. Um, we stream every Wednesday uh, from 7 p.m., sorry, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern for a couple of hours. We hang out, have a good time. The whole idea is bringing people together. Uh, and our slogan is guns down, drinks up. So if you are a pirate or if you're someone that's a total care bear that does cargo or other missions, uh, when you walk into the bar, you bring your ship up, any ship is a yacht, you bring it up, put down your guns, lift up a drink, hang out and have a good time with everybody that's there. Um, so I run that as well as the Yacht Club Discord. We have a great group of people. Come on by and, and check it out. Otherwise, uh, yeah, just hanging out and enjoying Star Citizen. Backer since 2014. Uh, love it. And uh, I don't think I'll ever leave. Awesome. And uh, Dionator, uh, Prince of Pluto, Emperor of Uranus. Um, who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? Um. Whoa! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> he he had uh, uh, since daylight where he is, and since he's a, a Dracula, he has to. Uh, um... It's not daylight. It's nine p.m. <laughs> okay, it's just it's just becoming evening where 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 he lives. Mm. So so he's he's just he's just waking up. All right, that's, that's, mm. that's going on. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah, no, <laughs> Yeah, hello, I am Darianator. I uh, mostly famous for uh, coming onto Paul's show and uh, drinking and, and yelling at um, usually Me? Vertigo. <laughs> Paul. Yeah, but usually Vertigo. Um, but also uh, something that uh, I, I alluded to last time, and I had something to show, but I also have more to show. I work for uh, a company called JRDF. Um, we do uh, licensed... Um, Kit models uh, of Star Citizen ships. So, uh, so you're gonna hate me, but I'm gonna steal the limelight for, Go for, for a bit here because I promised that. So, yeah. So this is a time, this is a this is a hangar uh, episode, and you're you're talking about ships, so it's an appropriate yeah. plug. So, sure. Yeah. So. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So we're very close to relaunching our um, our store because um, we moved from Scotland to USA, and there's legal. And tax reasons that are taking way too long uh, to to start up. But I, in the background, have been working. So um, uh, last time I was on, I showed you this. This is the no section of the Saber Raven that I managed um, to finish. Mm -hmm. But now you take this part and you put them together. As long as you don't break it. <laughs> yeah. And you have a nice. complete raven. 
It's a one, one to five hundred. It's one to one hundred. Yeah. One hundred. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, to to continue off one of your uh, anecdotes um, from from the pre-show, uh, this is me being an idiot. This hole will not be there um uh for the final model this was me uh gluing on the tail and then realizing i didn't put the magnet in for the stand so I yeah had to drill a hole. <laughs> yeah um so there will be adequate and plentiful and instructions for you to put this thing together um so uh but uh yeah until then we have all the little details look look look, look at all the panel and lines yes, and yes you, you don't get that normally uh, and then, for instance, what do we have? Oh, yeah, this part of the entire thing, about 60 um, different Good. parts. Oof. Yep. Nice. And uh, for, for, for uh, it's jrdf.sc is to go, is that to go is, there? Yeah, that's correct. Like, so. so, for instance, you have uh, landing gear. Mm hmm. Um, which you can pull out. And you can re swap it but with a flyer one, right? Yeah, with it's down. Yep. yep. Yeah. yeah, and it's all on magnets, so you can swap it out. Um, for instance, this one is uh, the landing gear. And uh, in flight mode, you can just take the, the, the little stick with a, ma with a magnet, pull it out, because there's magnets on the, on the other end. Now, these don't come with magnets, right? You have to buy the magnets they, yourself. They no, no, they come with magnets. No, they come with the magnets. We, 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 we do supply the magnets, yeah. Nice. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. And then, for instance, here you have the, uh, the EMP bay. You see the magnets inside. And we have boop, one door, other door. Nice. And cool. that, that's all that is. And the magnet that I forgot to install is for the stand. So that just goes... Hold like on. so. And yeah. I froze again. You're good. Anyway, that's going to be like the stand and then, you know. It'll it be, actually whoa. hooks on there. Nice. And it hooks on there, yeah. Uh, it's a bit, bit difficult to hold everything because it's not glued in. Like the nose is not glued in, so I don't have to holding it in. Yeah. I'm just, but yeah. Um, currently, uh, we have one kid with our with our um, lead painter. He's getting that together. Is that Bog? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, uh, he's US based because uh, I printed it and it was a lot easier to to um, to get to. Uh, so it's steel, steel Mary. Oh, you steel. Know him. Yeah, steel's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. steel, steel's very good. Uh, and also, there's a kit currently being printed at our headquarters um, for validation and everything, and then it will have to be sent to to John Crew from the United States to UK. <laughs> That's a bit of a bummer. It's just, but at it's least just we also, cost. yeah, yeah. But we and we also you also test if if our boxes and shipping and packaging is uh, up to snuff. Yeah, and nice. uh, yeah, this this is my first uh, big kit. Um, you designed uh, it, right? And like, uh, like I designed it. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, it is yeah a one to one hundred, so it's about twenty four centimeters long, and uh, the. The cockpit is also fully modeled. Comes with a with a seat and a pilot, and the ladder comes out, and and all the good stuff. And it's hollow in the inside, like so. So you can uh, stick a lighting kit, and you can see the magnets um, that yeah. are, that are the the got this for the stand, and stuff like that. So and you have lighting inserts here, and you have um, thrusters that will be either opaque or transparent. So if you want to do a lighting kit on the inside and everything, so yeah. Very, very proud of this one. Uh, and Congratulations, someone asked, looks great. Thank you. Can't wait for, for people to be able to get it. Uh, and, and someone asked... Um, Mark II? Mark II, uh, considering that it's, a, that it's just finished Gold Pass, potentially, um, we'll see... I'll just say, we'll see. Okay. There, are very, there, are, there are factors that could expedite... Ooh. Uh, if we're doing it or not, um, but yeah, we'll see. I was going to say definitely. I know those factors, but I'm also under NDA with JRDF because uh -huh. full full disclosure, I also am an advisor for JRDF. Yeah. I often work yeah. with them for like uh, lore blurbs and stuff like that, so they yeah. don't pay me. I'll, anything, I'll, but... Yeah, also also on on the off time, I just did this one. Nice. This this is a one to five hundred. 
So, so I, I will do a little bit. That's a really nice one to five hundred. Is that a is that is that an actual kit we have now, or is that a nope, kit that's no? No, there's still a prototype. Okay, it's still a prototype. So, yeah. so just just to kind of give, to give some context for folks, because uh, I know there's a lot of people who go, well, I, um, you know, I don't want to have to pay for it or rather print it myself. It's not just printing. What JRDF does is they take the models as they are as they are in game and then they have to completely rebuild them from scratch with the panel lines and the greebles because those are yeah. actual stickers rather than actual yeah, the, those, those are textures into. those are yeah. pictures and their technology to print pictures doesn't exist yet yes no <laughs> print pictures on a 3d to, 3d environment on a you 3D mean. model yeah yeah, yeah. That, that one yeah so, um, so they, they they have to go through it and the process it and and, and yes. those sorts of things. Uh, so it took me four months, I believe, to get to this stage of the Raven, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a month for the for for this one. These don't take as much work; mm -hmm. they take a lot of different work. Because if I printed this one in one to one hundred, it would look horrible. Because it's just it's not designed for it. Because all the detail has to work in this scale. Right. Yeah. Um, and and vice versa. If if I took one, um, if I took a, that one that is done to one hundred and printed it in one to five hundred scale, all the detail will be gone. Yeah, because it's, it's it's individual scale for individual models. Yeah. So, yeah. so and, and and they you, you as a model modeler would know like there's hero scale yeah. and there's yeah stuff like that because if if you look at a minifig, not a minifig that's a Lego term. If you look at like a character that's this 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 the small, all the proportions are completely wrong. For really for right. for humans, and I, even even though he's a star marine in full armor, but if but if, even then they would be completely wrong just because, yeah, at, this at a tiny scale at this scale just read differently. Yeah, at this scale the detail is very very basic, because if you get too detailed you can't see it on the model, and so yeah yeah um, exactly and. And so the uh, smaller models, you can get away with less detail and it still looks good. Whereas when you get yeah. to the larger models, you have to start adding more detail because it has to yeah, pop exactly. out. More, uh, so. But if there's like an iconic piece of detailing that's on the ship, oh, you have to keep it. Did we go offline somehow? No, no, people just going 40K and 30K. No, I, I, oh, okay. Or did we go offline? I, it says, it says I'm live, but I'll refresh it real quick. Yeah. Uh, no, it looks like good. So yeah. You seem live, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like how uh, uh, Kidistrophic says 30k is just trauma, Shempasta. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, yeah. Like, so, uh, like, like, if 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 I show if I show you this, like, like the the side door of the 400i, like that's gotta be in it, right? And it and it and mm -hmm. come on, fo focus, focus. It's a bit. You have to cover, cover your, your face. face. Yeah. 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 No, no, my 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 autofocus isn't as uh, I need to go actual manual focus. My autofocus isn't as smart to require face blocking. My, mine and <laughs> mine and mine and I have the exact same one that Darge has. It's just the the model, the one model up from him because Darge helped me buy this one. So, oh, I have I have a C920. There we go. Oh, you have C920. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, door. I have a C920. Yeah, yeah. So, so if I just use the um the model that it is in right now, that would be completely smooth. Yeah, so so that is the sort of work we have to do because, you know, and and that is one of the reasons why our kits are slightly more expensive than if you just printed them yourself. But we also have to make the kits that everyone can put together. It's not just yeah. you know people with decades of modern experience. It's someone who's who's potentially this would be the very first kit, mm -hmm. and they have to figure things out. Um, it's, it's a it's a battle, and yeah. it's, it takes research and development a lot of it. Um, yeah. But they do use industrial printers, uh, yes. so there are there are industrial Which scale also printers. Another reason why it's taking <laughs> like so they long. Cost more, yeah, yeah. The, uh, maybe, they're just maybe printed, not painted. This. Yeah, the, the, they're just printed. Uh, this would have about a hundred dollars worth of resin in the end. Oof. Okay. Yeah, because the resin we use, unfortunately, does come at that much of a cost because we went with super high quality printers that are reliable, that can run 24 seven, that can, because we need to print 500 of those, right? Yeah. All of those, it would, it, it would take a month and a half just if we wanted to just to print 150 of those. So it's, it's a hundred a month that we, that, that we can do with our capacity. And we already have like 10, 4,000 mm. euro printers. 
it's it's but we're still not at that uh, that um level of capacity where you know uh where injection molding would uh would be would beneficial more sense. to us yeah yeah because right. then you, you move from we, resin to plastic we can't yeah. do with yeah, yeah, we're some things we can't do with injection molding, like overhangs and cavities. Just, just, just tell J Jr. to go down to, um, to, to Sherwood, or to, to, to Sherwood, to uh, Nottingham, and uh, break into the, uh, to the, to the, to the uh, Games Workshop basement. That's where they keep all of their injection molds. And just steal some of their molds. Fig figure out how they yeah, do so yeah, detailed, yeah. Mold, high detailed molds. <laughs> no, that's uh, easy. No, no, get, getting a mold that of of that uh, detail is easy. It's fucking expensive, though. <laughs> so um, it's kind of a little anyway, tangent, t high tangent, yeah, but, it's uh, a they, bit of a tangent. But yeah. I did promise last time I was I would do an update. Okay. So yeah. Um, and then take it up with as Darsh. There, there, there were a couple questions. Do, do you ship beyond the U.S.? Yes. Uh, before we shipped to every country except China, I believe, but that was to do with international. Uh, weirdness Law. and like, <laughs> like yeah, trade yeah. embargo issues you know yeah yeah uh and when when we resume uh selling from the states we will also be uh um um uh, pr pretty much the same um reach yeah okay uh yeah so yeah uh one-to-one -one address in your living room how big is your living room <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the one to five hundred scale does seem like it's small, but one one to five hundred carrick is the size of what was it like? It's like it is this this long. It's that slightly long. longer than this. It's narrower, but it is also much taller as well. And and, and so uh, a one to five hundred Idris would be ten inches. Twice... It's exactly ten inches. Oh, yeah. Mm. So one to five one to five hundred Idris would be twenty inches long. That's yep. Over almost. Uh, it's over like one and a half. It's about one, almost one hundred one and a half foot. That's a pretty big model. That's not a mini yeah. anymore. <laughs> it's a yeah, model. and and because it's that large, it, it also uh, allows us to do super intricate things with it. Like you have a, a removable ceiling on the bridge with magnets, so you can see yeah. on the inside. You have removable tops, so you can see into the hangar. You have the doors on the front that hinge open, and you will definitely get gladiuses with it. Yeah, you know. So, so, so yeah, we, it wouldn't be just an inert chunk. We want to make a very nice like a showpiece, something yeah, that someone exactly. put on like a wall yeah. or someone on like, like on a desk or something like that or something like yeah. that. Yeah, because that is the sort of detail that we strive for. Um, because because these ships deserve it. Nice, but yeah, it would 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 need more more people, more printers, more money. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just me right now. <laughs> Um, and, 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 but if you if you I get a chance a to work already, I, I would suggest because I'm going to start printing, uh, painting some of my stuff over the summer when I have more time and I do dedicated mm -hmm. painting streams. I've got a bunch of one to five hundred scale, and I'm going to buy a bunch more one to five hundred scale. I actually got a bunch of one to five hundred scale over at CitizenCon that I got to paint. It's like uh, the, all of the stuff you yeah. did, the um, the 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 I did the cutter for, the uh, you know. Yeah, the four Drake and the four four Aegis ones that we re released uh, the latest. Yeah, so we have the Cutter, the Vulture, the uh, the Herald, and the Buccaneer. Those are mm -hmm. the Drake ones. Yeah. And on the Aegis side, I did the Avenger, which is my favorite because I also did the um the, the little nice hex pattern on the wings above that I really like the way that came out. Uh, and the Vanguard, the not the Gladius, the 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 small Raven. Yeah, um, one to five hundred raven. One to five hundred raven. Uh, four, four, four. The, there, there, there's a... Gladius, Raven, Vanguard. Gladius um... was was Gladius was um was, was, already uh, there. was Jones. The Jones. Yeah, it was already there. there there's a there's a fourth you just one. So if anybody in chat can can go check it out. Um, I'm trying to think yeah. about what the what what the other Aegis fighters are. Oh, uh, Eclipse. Yes, eclipse. It was eclipse. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was the eclipse, and I really like that how how I how I did the the wings that fold up. That was nice. really nice. I, they, they don't fold up. You get a landed four version. of them. Yeah. yeah, you get a landed version because at one to five hundred, it would be weird to do that. I could still do it. So. I could I could make a tiny little 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 uh, clip off the wings and do a tiny little. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but but it would but be a pain in the butt. <laughs> But that, because you're also very practiced with modeling, we need yes. this to be 
I've been, I've been doing it for almost one. five years, so I, I know how to do those sorts yeah. of things. So Stim's just sitting here shaking his head and being like, yeah, this is, I have no idea what these two are talking about. There you go. And I, I enjoy printing things, but I haven't done a ton of modeling. I do more um, making. I've made a garden tower for, for growing salads, and I uh, originally got it the first one just to 3d print a small piece that I could not find anywhere in order to fix the, the custom cabinetry that I have. Cause they have these clips. Oh yeah. <laughs> they're designed. Uh, and then the I, very, I, one of the, one of the first thing it. I printed was a shim for the door of a fridge because it kept, it kept fouling and, and you couldn't get, you couldn't get the shim. You just couldn't, couldn't get it. So it was, but it was basically like three millimeter uh, washer um, that was right. in the hinge. And yeah. Yeah. Kind of what fixed. it's in after that, uh, you know, it's been uh, tons of stuff for, for growing and in the garden. Um, I've made like a geodesic cat dome. Uh, for my cat to sleep in, all kinds of fun things. There's so many practical applications. Oh yeah, uh, behind printers as well. Mm. I, I got uh, I got mine to, to. I've been doing a bunch of stuff with the cam, the, like fidgets. She has like little some fidget fidget stuff she likes. We've actually uh, we're actually printing off um, I'm printing off right now uh, two uh, portal. They're based off of Portal, the video game um, mm. bookends. So it's like one side is yes. you know the other, and then. Um, she she jokingly sent me the bust of David, uh, Michelangelo's David. She's like, "You're gonna print this?" I'm like, "I could. It's not that difficult. It's a pretty big scale, and I have an FDM printer, so it'd be easy to do." <laughs> so, because uh, the last thing I'll say about the Raven is, uh, in Beacon in May, we are going to be showing off um, the showing it off live. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you're there, you'll be able to see it. There will be a boxed, fully painted, fully lit version that um, Steel is working on. And there will also be uh, one that's completely unpainted in pieces that people will be able to actually just inspect and touch. And I just realized that we're going to have to do a lot of spare little parts because those are just going to disappear, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Beacon in May in Belgium, if you're going, uh, come check it out. All right. With that, twenty minutes into the show, I apologize for those of you <laughs> listening to later. Later, uh, let's get into you the can actual cut topic. This out from the video. Um, I'll, I'll just put a little segment in here to talk about JRDF stuff because I think I do think it's it's an important stuff and it is sort of tangentially related to what we're talking about with hangers and stuff like that. But um, we're, we're we're talking about hangers and cargo for today. Because CIG did a big uh, um, kind of ISC, and uh, I, I felt there was a good topic to go over um, mm -hmm. because of, you know, both the industrial aspect with cargo, but also the just kind of the fundamental changes. And also the, the, the hangar, because I'll start off with this by saying when they talked about how ships are going to be called to your personal hangar rising out of the ground through a, through an elevator. My first thought was uh, pumping my fists in the air and screaming, I called it, I called it, I called it, um, because I called it <laughs> years ago. I said, I, I said that's how they're going to probably deal with it because it's just going to like, yeah. like magic out of existence and then magic back in, um, which tells me that there is some system in place which is taking ships and then like, storing them somewhere in some mechanical have you seen those like mechanical like bike holders where like you put a bike in or like yeah. suck it in and then like 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 uh like store it for a while it's like a car there, there's, oh, car, there's car garages in in frankfurt yeah. i believe there's like yeah. a tower of a car garage they just park it yeah. on, on a spot and yeah. then a huge like fork will grab it and then, and then, then pull it go, in whoop. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, that scene from uh, from from iRobot where he parks his car and it kind of like pulls yeah. it in and that, that kind of, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 just they're just giant like vending machines of uh, of, of <laughs> ships somewhere on <laughs> landing zones. That's why the stations are so big because the entire interior is filled with player ships. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> up up to up to and including like uh, hammerheads, so it's just pretty big. Um. But uh, but the the fact that it was rising out of the ground, uh, I, I the first thing I could think of was, this is going to change the first person, the first experience of players because yeah. players up to this point have been just calling your ship and just kind of plops into existence, or you walk down and you're like, hey, there's my ship. Now you walk down, you you activate your personal hangar, you hit retrieve, 
and there's going to be lights and sound and fog and um, I love the drama they dim the lights it's, the orange holographic barrier comes goes up. up I expect the, there's the going to be some like warning ended. lights I like the the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. like the warning lights and maybe even a voiceover sound effect. It's just, uh, you take, feel free to take this idea, CIG. It's, uh, the voiceover would be like, please stand clear of, uh, of, the, of the doors. The hangar is raising, you know, in that kind of calm, calm manner. Mm. And uh, uh, mind the gap. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to add that to the trams. Yes. <laughs> and, and, uh, as it raises out of, the, out of the ground and your ship just rises to meet you, that scene is going to be pretty epic in, in, the, in the sense of just like, seeing it like that will be pretty uh, pretty in, in, engaging because you could see, like elite dangerous has that in the past has had that but it's like third person and it's sort of like kind of like you're kind of disconnected from from the experience in this case it's like you're seeing the whole thing in first person which is pretty pretty engaging yeah, i have to mind. go ban someone on youtube hold on okay yeah feel free <laughs> <laughs> thank you or or we just completely change the topic of, of, of the show and talk about wokeness in games because <laughs> that is the topic du jour, I believe. Well, personal right? hangers are going to, you know, open up the, the opportunity for so many things to happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's an opportunity for more wokeness for sure. It's going to wake you up, definitely. Yeah. Um, but my point being with that is that 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 alone told me just how much just the fundamental experience of Star Citizen is going to change because of how important ships are in the experience. This is almost the same as like master modes or quantum travel changes because this is like how you interact with your ships when you're not flying them, when you're storing them, you're landing them, how you interact with your, your inventory, everything. It's like all of the logistical side of the game is now going to be a completely unique experience alongside everything else that's changing. Because things, ha yeah, things have been slowing down in that regard, but a lot of people still don't consider the actual non-flying part of Star Citizen as a valid part. They think it's all just to get in the way of you flying a ship. Mm. But they don't understand it's it's supposed to be just as important a part of the Star Citizen experience as it is actually sitting in the cockpit chair. So it's to give you control, you know. So, but yeah. before before we get into the you know the, this sort of this sort of in depth topic, let's talk about what hangers were before we mm. we we lost them. Um so let's just kind of just kind of talk. We'll start with you, Darge, and then Stan. Feel free to pick up any th any time. What were hangers before? For the, especially for those people who were joined recently, after the hangar mo module was removed from the game. Like, what were hangers? Oh, so I'm fr Paul. You probably are from the same time as I am, yeah. but we're from the days of zero point eight. Yeah. Um, clients where all we had were hangers. Uh. At their peak, I want to say, because uh, there was one time where all the ships that you owned would be loaded into the hangar at the same time with the rooms that would go on and on forever. And if you had more than just a handful, good luck if you didn't have a supercomputer. Yeah. Because goddamn, the game was unoptimized back then. Uh, but and that was the, the only thing that we had back then. Um, that was the reason why uh, the PTV was added, actually, was because that, you needed yep. to be able to travel to different ships because you literally it would take you too long to walk between all of the different yeah. ships. So the PTV is probably the only remnant of that era that we have in game right now, I want to say. Um, oh god, it was such yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, because all, all the hangar types really changed so much, and we lost some hangar yeah. types. But and are, it, the the, the engines gone completely is different. Like the the entire game looks completely different, and all the ships have either gotten uh, refactors or uh, you know weren't even uh, existing back then. Uh, the Aurora got a refactor, Mustang got a refactor, Cutlass got a refactor. Uh, the Hornet got several refactors since, mm -hmm. uh, and that's all we had back then as well. Um, but this, we were talking before Revel in York, guys. Yeah. Before VFG, before we got the branding. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it was the business hangar, it was the industrial hangar, and it was the modern hangar. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah then we got um the uh the branded hangers that already removed which ships um in all the ships you you had to select a single ship before you loaded in the module mm -hmm. and then we lost it completely anything you want to add Stan, in terms of like like what the what the hangers were oh yeah i mean we had the arena commander pod in the hangers as well right so yes you wouldn't log into arena commander through a separate or Menu. through the same uh loader you'd have to go into your hangar and it was really a personal hangar you'd step into this cool pod and then it would load up arena commander um, that wasn't the first iteration of it before before that you had, you to, had to go into, into, into a cockpit, ship yeah into the cockpit of the ship oh, wow. and then you would uh, load into the arena commander but then so, they added the pod yeah I, I joined right after we lost the large, like every ship in, hanger. One. Yeah. 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 And there, there were a, a whole bunch of issues at that time, but you know, we saw the, 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 uh, the rebel New York hangers come in and, and just, just a, a beautiful time to be part of the game because finally these ships that you'd been buying, you could actually get in and, and see, you know, uh, a few of them at least <laughs> yeah. um, in game. I guess, I guess one of the biggest things was, um, well, not a big thing, but some of the neat stuff is we were watching a, a video um, kind of of nostalgia that was on Reddit uh, on the Yacht Club uh, a couple of weeks ago. And they were showing the, the, the PTV going from hangar to hangar when we had these huge uh, multi-ship hangars. And there, were, there was a ramp at one point. Yeah, there was a ramp. You could <laughs> ramp it. And a, and, a, and a hoop you could jump through. Um, so, so we have the racing tracks for the PTV now in the verse, but we already had the racing tracks in the hangars, and we lost yeah. it all. Do you think uh, we'll get Arena Commander um, uh, pods? Oh yeah, in our personal they, uh, they exist. They are if you if you land at the commons and you walk in, as soon as you go through the airlock, if you take a left, you can go into a room where there's a bunch of uh, pods stored. Yeah. Okay. So there's no yeah, technical reason why yeah. you wouldn't. Yeah. 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 Well, there's there's still be. the the models are still there, and I imagine the animations at least probably are still there. Probably wouldn't be too difficult to 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 adapt what they have. Yeah, wait, wait, but but also I think the pods are in the in the lower floor of uh, of the factory line, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, there as well. Yeah, they, they have more. That, that, that's just the so. back room for for the factory line. Yeah, like they they have lore because actually there's a lore blurb about them because they were they were made mm. by Microtech. Those 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 little pods are. Um but did you not hear that? No. It's thunder. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, no, uh, the other thing to, 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 for people to remember was like originally the idea was, was that every time you every hanger you got, so every ship you had had a free hanger, which meant that mm. when you got into the verse, you were going to get a free uh, one you didn't have to pay for because like in the near future, if you don't have your personal hangar, you know, available, if you park your ship in it, like say a station, you actually have to pay landing fees, the hangar fees for, for storing your ship for a certain amount of time. Um, I remember in my account, I had bought multiple Revel and York hangers yeah. so that my ships that didn't come with them, I could use those Revel and York hangers. But uh, those are, those are days gone past. Yeah. I'm sure they'll find I, some of their ways. I way do of doing wonder it, so. what they what what they. I, I think once we are able to buy real estate or or land, mm -hmm. uh, one of those modules will just be included as a freebie, alongside. Like you'll have to buy, you have to build and buy the uh, the hab, yeah, and and maybe a landing pad, but the hangar, no, that will be zero a alpha UAC when you when you click purchase. Or something like that. They'll they'll do something because yeah. like they'll yeah. either have to re like ref return people's money for those those sorts of things or or figure something out for it. Yeah. But, but uh, the I'd idea. Ra I'd rather ha I'd rather have them do something in game than than do a refund because that's more fun. Uh, and and if you um, if you uh look buy ships now, you'll notice that every ship comes with a hanger, still on your packages. Yep. So our, every ship, even standalone ships, has a hanger. That's the reason why it has that hanger. Why it says hangers, if you look at it, it's like, what the heck, what the heck does this mean? It means that it comes with a free storage facility for your ship. Um, yeah. But so. that totally has to change because depending upon, I mean, you'll only have one personal hanger. It's not like it's going to change from something looking really nice to something looking really industrial, yeah. you know, um, 
depending upon what ship you spawn. So it's, and you know, if you're a Grim Hex, you're not going to have a nice, beautiful origin looking hanger. So yeah, we'll no, no, it. but a Grim Hex is an established um, location that has already been built. I I believe when these hangers will be for us to, to build, on our uh, own, like to build. Zones. yeah, yeah. Although I could see because okay. they're supposed all, to be they're for, supposed for, to be modular, I, I, so I could also yeah. see them being like something you could swap on the fly. So you can swap the aesthetics on the fly if you want to. Prob probably in UEE governed S landing space. zones. Space, yeah, in very specific yeah. locations, yeah. That was yeah. always supposed to be the thing yeah, because yeah, the yeah, asteroid a hangar was supposed to be an Yeah, asteroid, Riker Memorial, so, you know. yeah, exactly, yeah. So. Uh, they have, they still have time to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, uh, they'll, they'll find something about, about that. We'll, we'll kind of go more into depth, but um, that's kind of like, what 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 hangers used to be and as cig showed off recently they've changed how it works so and i'll kind of go very briefly but i would suggest people watch the isc if you have you don't know what we're talking about um the the Fantastic way the hangers work ISC. yeah it's for great yeah. um yeah. uh it is the the way that hangers are working effectively is you will have normal hangers that normally exist the way they, they do now and then you have your personal hanger which is slightly bigger than the other hangers. It may be that all the hangers are slightly bigger, but like like the personal hangers are now larger um, for each ship size. And you're going to get, your hanger is going to be the size of your largest ship. So if you have an 890 jump, you will have an 890 hanger. And the uh, you can put your stuff around, you can just like plop stuff down and it'll persist through each each phases as you request landing. If you have a personal landing pad, a personal, personal hanger, they will like, you will be, it's landing in your personal hangar. Uh, and then when you want to store your ship, there'll be a ASOP terminal in your personal hangar, which you can select your ship and you can set store and it'll descend down through an elevator system and then close up. And then if you wanted to get a new one, you could call it back up and it was another, another ship would, would rise up from the, from the depths of, uh, of this, of this, uh, this internal mechanism somewhere. So you can kind of spawn them all from your hangar inside your hangar. But you can also leave around your hangar flare or other things. You can do things like like spawn a, a vehicle and then drive it off the pad and then uh, then spawn your own ship and then you know load your vehicle onto your ship directly. Um, that I want to add is a workaround because the, the vehicles are supposed to be all converted to items yes. so you can retrieve them via the freight elevator which apparently they the they don't elevator. which they don't have yeah we found out i found that out thursday which is that all of the vehicles and all of the uh uh all the vehicles are separate from uh from items so like they don't have their yeah. own item numbers they have they have parts so like the vehicles yeah. are made up yeah. of items but they're separate so exactly so so a conversion on the back end to enable that is still ongoing, which is why they added the workaround. So if you want to bring out a PTV or a Cyclone or an STV, you go to the actual big A sub terminal and it rises from the ground like an H90 would instead of through the door of the freight mm -hmm. elevator, as as was shown off several times already. But yeah, yeah uh, it's 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 a good enough workaround, I would say. What's the biggest vehicle we've seen in the freight elevators that they've shown off? Uh, the was it um, was it was the it Atlas, Atlas, Atlas platform? Atlas chassis. Yeah, the Atlas chassis. Yeah. So the so, Ballistas, Centurions, Spartans. Those is, ones. Is, yeah, isn't the Tonk taller than that? Uh, no, no. actually, it's no. a little shorter because like the the the, mm. the 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 Ballistas has like their their missile things actually extend beyond it, but like okay. all of the Ballistas and all of uh, all Ballistas fit in the same space as uh as the hercules as the um as the tonk so they both have they both fit into the to, to hercules so they should fit into the uh the so if it fits elevator. in a hercules it'll fit in the freight elevator yes probably. i think that's that's yeah. probably the, the metrics they're using so hmm. and i mean that's a pretty decent size freight elevator and oh yeah I, I wonder if i wonder if the freight elevators will scale with the size of the hangar that you have i can and, almost and could it be that you have to have a ship large enough to potentially hold a Centurion in it <laughs> in order to have I, the size of a freight elevator that could house one? I can imagine that. I can almost imagine that. I, yeah, I think... yeah, because 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 like if you have a small hangar with an Aurora in it, the freight elevator is probably pretty much going to be the same size. Yeah, yeah, 
but you wouldn't you wouldn't need to call a centurion out of the out of your uh, yeah out of your hangar if yeah. you only had or, an aurora because you could load it up or six hundred UEC oh no uh, not UEC um I'm, what am I blanking on the, the units six hundred I <laughs> no no six hundred freight units of oh, I, I, um, be... SCU. SCU, yeah. yeah, that's the one. Yeah, uh, you 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 wouldn't be calling that out if you only have an Aurora as well. So yeah, yeah, it I think would make sense. Stuck in the old hangar mode with the with the cargo units we were using back then. Freight units, <laughs> yeah. yeah. FUs, um, a Star Citizen FUs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's let's let's. But let's yeah, think it, about... it 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 would have to go bigger just because if you have like a big ship that's landed and you want to load it up, you don't want to take several um, loads of cargo if you if you want to you know carry everything. Yeah, um, yeah. Let, let's mm. let's talk about more specific. I'll start with you on this one, Stim. How do you see this changing the the experience of the day to day experience of most people's like? You know, new players, veteran players. How is this going to, in your opinion, and based off of your observations, like shift people, you know, like or change people's day to day gameplay? Sure, uh, it's a great question, uh, Paul. The most people that are watching the ISC don't really kind of clue in to the fact that this is changing everybody's experience. A lot of people think, oh, it's really just cargo, right? Um, and, and they go into the cargo part in, in great detail. And we're not really there in the discussion yet. But, you know, if you've been a backer for a long time, you may have fish tanks and ship models, like those Tengesu models. Um, uh, you've got like drink makers, you've got fish tanks, you've got... Like, jukebox. You know, jukebox, mm -hmm. yeah, piano. You know, uh, and and so there, there's, and that's for the that's for the Phoenix. But what's to say you couldn't put it in your hangar? So there's a there's a lot of people out there that have been around for a while that have all this hangar flair that want to create just an, a, a place where people can get together and hang out and um, really connect and talk. And people will go and they'll spend a lot of time outfitting their their hangar and personalizing it everybody wants to personalize their ship with skins um you know and and coffee makers and everything as that comes out they'll certainly want to do it with their personal hangers yeah. and while i can see everybody going out to wally's bar and all of these places to meet in public having those private events whether it's on an 890 or whether it's in your personal hangar is going to be a big component so oh hell yeah like 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 you just this it's the ultimate man cave you have mm -hmm. the drinks maker you have the jukebox and in the background my spaceship yeah like, yeah like of, of course you will you'll want to hang and on top there. of and on top of that you could have parts of that spaceship being disassembled and repaired for 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 maintenance in the background just yeah. like uh and any other it's 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 the 30th century man cave it's like why yeah. why what this 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 300 has been sitting in your in your hangar for for four weeks it's like yeah, I'm 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 repairing its uh, its power source. All right, get off my back. Yeah. Cracks beer, <laughs> drinks, you know. <laughs> I used to I used to do a lot of skydiving, and in the at a lot of drop zones, it's actually a hangar. So mm. it is it is a giant hangar, and you've got the planes in there, and on the side you've got parachutes, and you've got a bar, and you've got you know the reception desk and area, and and you've got training rigs, and you've got mock ups for jumping out of the airplane, and where you, where you can sort of uh, practice what you would do and stuff like that. And while while people are are um, going and doing jumps, you're hanging out and you're chatting. There'll be a picnic table. You'll be sharing food. And in the evening, it becomes a party mode. You know, everybody the last the last jump happens. Beer light comes on, and everybody hangs out and chats <laughs> and it's super social. So I mean, there is this is already being done in certain you know, yep. circles from a hangar perspective. So for me, it's kind of exciting to see that come into the game. Um, uh, uh, one, one thing I'll tell you, like an anecdote, uh, how long the players uh, of Star Citizen have been wanting to, to turn their hangars into a social space is that mm. a, a couple of friends of mine did a, a video on a green screen and we were playing poker. And I remember so, seeing and that one. That that was you. Remember, you remember yeah. that one? That was yeah. me. Yeah, that was me. 
um, we put it in a Revel in York hangar and I did all these pans along the hangar and then zoomed in and we were just playing out and stuff like that. And that was so long ago, it was featured on Wingman's hangar. Yeah, I saw it on Wingman's <laughs> hangar. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that so. was a while back. That was a while back. <laughs> I, I I do think that CIG also knows that this is the case because the the, the media team that uh, that works for ISC, I, I've always noticed like like their, their their hangers are a wreck, like couches just strewn about in places, beer bottles everywhere, like uh, picos just hanging out, like 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 mm -hmm. packages just and other bo boxes just stacked everywhere. It's it's very much like a uh, that kind of thirtieth century man cave experience. So. Well, that's that's typical, you know, immersion setting, right? Is yeah. having trash and empties and all that all over yeah. the place. It's from it's, super it's, it's <laughs> like like the little little um, like extra room in the corridor of the Lorval um, Habs. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's yeah. exactly it. You have the mattresses, you have the couches, and the upside down buckets of seats, and you have playing cards everywhere, and chips and beer bottles. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the common spaces. I want to know, oh. uh, you know, what what flare is going to be coming soon, and how quickly we're going to get it, and what flare that's already been created are we going to get? So, are we going to get the fish tank? Are we going to get these these models? Are we going to get trophy cases right away? And then, what's coming? Are we getting posters? Is it all going to be subs subscriber posters, flare? You know? Posters, posters. They've been recently um, testing like a modular. Like like a roll, or, roll yeah. out um, for for posters, yeah. So you can just choose which poster you want to display, and it will swap out. Uh, I've seen that in the game files. We've seen that on ISC. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, but I kind of want to say, considering the age of all those assets, like we'll they need to get updated. We'll, they will they will they will be made anew with the same sort of spirit. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. But I mean, mm. but you're right. Like, like, this is more than just the subscribe. Dowel especially. Yes. Oh gosh. Uh, but but like the um, um, the 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 question is, is like, are those subscriber flare items going to be something you get in game? Because one of the things that they had was the the tuning desk, like the tuning uh, bench, the hollow table. Uh, oh, supposed to the hollow table, but that mm. tuning that but that 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 tuning like that the or the overclocking bench that you could buy. Um, almost certainly it's going to become a crafting table. Like that's that's yeah. that's exactly what that is. And uh, you know, in in modern Star Citizen parlance, it's like it's going to be where you go take your 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 blueprints and you throw them down on the table and you go like you know build yourself a a small thing or something like that. So um, yeah, no, it's 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 very interesting to 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 see that that sort of like social experience because. We have lacked a personalized social experience in Star Citizen because mm -hmm. everything's been, you know, set dressed for us. Now we can actually dress our set set dress, set our own dressing. So, um, and Paul, you'll finally be able to be a bartender in your own personal bar. Not being griefed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darinator, anything you yeah. want to add to this? Like, what, how do you think this is going to change the, the day to day experience of players? Well. Uh... So, so Stim touched on the social side of it, but um, a lot of it is going to affect all, also the cargo bit, because um, yeah. you know, this is something that I was hoping that we'd see in the ISC, where there was no mention of it. But the the whole cargo hauling profession uh, that's coming in Star Citizen, not the trader, but the cargo hauler, someone mm -hmm. who just Takes uh, a job. Accepts a mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a mission. We need you to take this amount of stuff from here to there. Figure it out. Um, and that is going to be com now completely not completely different, but it, it it will be like 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 an evolution of what the the hull sea cargo loading and unloading experience is already, because that will be the sort of the same thing you. You buy the, the the stuff, and then you have to wait for it to be loaded, or you don't do that. You just you know have it delivered via freight elevator and load it in manually, and that's going to be a, a thing for people if they want to save on money but not on time. 
and vice versa for people who who you know just want to do something else in the 15 minutes while the ship is being loaded they just have a countdown timer and then when that is done ship is loaded they can fly right out uh i, I think you're talking about door dashing for some ice for the drinks is that <laughs> <laughs> for the bar yeah that, that as well yeah yeah, yeah, that's yeah, um, but, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that though. Like the the whole being able to take a mission, saying like, "Hey, we need to take four SCU to this location," and so you just pull, you go to your 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 personal hangar, or you go to your your um, what? Because it's not just personal hangers. Uh, regular hangers will yeah. also have have the freight elevators. So if you're just like on a station, you go to the station, you go, okay, retrieve my mission items, which should pop into your inventory for, for that. You retrieve those mission items and you pull them out and you put them in your ship and you fly off to where you need to go and then deliver those items. So, um, that's nice. So, yeah. Uh, and anything else like, like, like the personal hangers are probably going to start becoming the personal spaces before we get, um, habs them, and, uh, and, and um, habs. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you think? Look, look, I, I will. I will uh, then come back in. But do yeah. you think, Paul, that um, that what CIG should do for personal hangers is just add habitation as well? I think there should be some habitation because it's it's not just a. We, I was on Space Tomatoes uh, podcast earlier today when we were talking about like a character customization. And then one of the things that all of us came to the agreement on is that character customization is more than just your character creation. It's your earning of, of you know different unique identifiers and other things like that. And a lot of that is personalization and your, the way you want to play the game. And I can guarantee you there'll be some people who will find it the meta meta answer is like, I'm just going to sleep in my hangar and I'll be fine. And other people who are like, I, I'm a grease monkey. I'm just going to sleep in the hangar. Of course, I'm going to sleep next to the ships because that's, that's where I want to be. I don't want to go halfway across the planet to my to my where I'm where my my apartment is. I'm here. This is what all that matters, you know, kind of thing. So I do think that it's going to be at least initially well, available yeah. for sleeping in. But also, I think it's also going to be a. A, a, an allowance for people to be able to kind of sack out in the in the hangar. So sure, no, but but, but I, I I it doesn't even have to be that like goblin, yeah, like, goblin esque. Just have a door that oh, yeah, to leads like a room. to a hab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just, see just like 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 one of those habs that are already in the habitation buildings. Mm -hmm. Just have that next to to like like across from 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 the elevator door. I could Do see you think that'll take away from people wanting to have pads and apartments and no. stuff like that as well? If you make those as basic bitch as possible, no. It's like it's like the 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 hex habs, what the, what they're called. There's a term for them. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the, the capsule pod, they're like the cap the uh, the pod um, pod um, hotels, capsule hotels, capsule right. hotels. What they're right. called. That's basically yeah, what just, we have just, now. Just like the pod, so. just like the pods at Grim Hex. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. hex. Yeah, the things. Okay, maybe. Maybe not that goblin. You know. <laughs> uh, the easy habs, the easy hab uh, yeah, stuff, the easy stations. Habs. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the station easy habs. Yeah, just those. Not not as l lavishly decorated as the ones on New Babbage or Orison, but or you know size. the station ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of fifth element, like in a way, as far as like that. His his apartment was really just one room that just kind yeah, of it was. You know? I now that now that you mention it, I want to say that those easy habs are very much a, inspired uh, inspired by the uh, the fi the fifth element. Um, have you, have you seen thing. Japanese capsule hotels? I don't yes. know if it's just Japan, but I think I think other countries have them as well. But I know yeah. it's it like pioneered Japan. But it's like that's that to me that was like that was e the easy answer. It's like yeah, they're definitely doing that. They're definitely combining like fifth element. Japanese capsule hotels and the IS, ISS because you look at the ISS and like the rooms there are all very like it's a rectangular tube that you sleep in you know and keep mm, all your yeah. stuff in so um yeah uh but yeah no no just, just one of those tiny little habs next to next to the hangar and that way you also shut up all the whiners who bitch about 
public transport and how it takes yeah. so long to get from the building down to the that's tram why, to the that, spaceport. That's what I mean. Like meta people, people, people who are just like, man, I want to, I don't want to deal with it. It's cool. You just, just sack out in your hangar. You don't have to move anywhere. You don't have to do anything. So. Mm. Yeah. And the things that you decorate your hab with will be different from the things you decorate your home with. Yeah. Sure. You know, red, yeah. And, you know, whether that's uh, on a planet somewhere because you've built a an outpost or whether that's in a building somewhere as a as an org building, you know, like a big frat house yeah. <laughs> or, you know, whether that's in your hangar. Yeah, I do. Yeah, because like I said, hangars are the man caves. The yes. home is, you know, for the throw pillows. The man <laughs> cave is for throwing people onto pillows. Right? <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, the Habs. Here. Yes, so you could have a couch. You sleep on the couch. See, <laughs> see, see, Stim isn't isn't currently broadcasting from his man cave in my hangar right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, um, the Habs thing. So I know this is going to be brought up. I don't think we're also going to. I think the, this is the first step, and then we're going to get like Habs when they get the procedural interior stuff done. Because like uh, the people who are working on this, these hangers are the people who are working on the the Habs and they wanted to get this done before they got the procedural Habs done. And I believe the, no, it was the um, procedural interior team is the same team that was working on the distribution centers. So once they get the distribution centers done, they're going to move on to the R and D team that worked on that as a working on um, the, the dynamic um, interiors for buildings. So I, okay. you know, um, but yeah, no, this is this I would say this is the first the one thing I will say about this in terms of like my experience of like how things are gonna change is like I said, your first impressions are gonna change. But there's going to be a lot more time spent in your hangar. It's more than just like right now, even I when I play, I just sprint to my ship, get in my ship and go. Like you you're gonna spend a lot more time in your hangar, loading and unloading, like like customizing. There, there's gonna be more things to do in the hangar. And it's become more part of the game rather than a just a kind of a almost an afterthought, um, because again, CIG wants to make the game play immersive, but also like like there, there needs to be a point to things because if there's no point to it other than it looks pretty, you don't want to spend a ton of asset time building stuff. So they spend a lot of time on on hangers for Squadron and a little bit of for Star Citizen. They're going to spend some time and figure out to make good gameplay. And that was always the idea was this sort of hangar was going to be your home sort of thing before they had even had Habs ideas. So mm. and that's why they need to add the Habs, like just look a little little room for you to sleep in cuz like if you really want to do meta, just log out in your bed in your ship. Don't even yeah. come in to land. So um, I also I also think that especially for landing zones they need to move those those hotels that they current that currently exist into the, mm. the spaceport because like hotels are near yeah. airports like that, that's where they should be <laughs> instead of traveling to the center of downtown to get a hotel yeah cause, cause that, that is where your home is not where you rent a room in a hotel yeah, yeah. so so yeah. yeah so I wonder I wonder what the you know what the next patch so dot twenty three is going to bring us? Is it really just the proof of concept and the first time it comes out? Or are we getting a selection of the hangar flare that we've been waiting for? You know, I mean, because in order for it to really become where we're spending time in there, we need the bar, we need the foosball table, pool table, um, all of this I stuff to kind of bring people together to, to do things around. We want a, uh, you know, an arcade machine. We want all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I think some of it is like uh, the one thing that was mentioned because I um I think we were at some point I was talking about this um with Jake, and uh the topic came up about the hangers and Jake said looked uh, didn't look Jake did the metaphoric look look everyone straight in the eye and said why do you think we're still making hanger flare for for the for the for the subscriptions why do you think we've been adding more of them recently in the last couple of months because we knew this was coming and we wanted people to be able to populate it. And if you go into your inventory right now, all that stuff's in your inventory. So it's, you can go into miscellaneous and it'll pop up in your home, home area. It'll pop up all of your stuff, your 
fish tanks, your models, your your display cases. I don't think you're going to have the attachment system, the old attachment system that worked with uh, the original hangers. But I, mm-hmm. I do think it's going to be at least initially a fits it sits situation where like you pull it out of your inventory, you just kind Ooh. of tractor beam it over yeah. to where you need it to be, and then place it down, and then yeah. you know Good maneuver thing. it that way. So you know, just just like 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 you can you know when you're carrying a box and you pull it down, and if you if you hold and scroll with your mouse wheel, you'll also rotate it. So there is a way of. Uh, of very finely uh, positioning and uh, everything that you're holding, at least, yeah. Uh, old attachment system, chat's asking. Uh, so back in the day, yeah. there was a there was an item port system, is what they called it. Um, yeah. It's the same system that still exists for ships, I believe, because it's basically like when you spawn a ship. Oh, no, no, it's had completely a, new. Is it new? It's, yeah, it's, it's the really hangers are so old. Every, everything about them is gone. So there's there was a like how you spawned your ship was you had these little little tiny AR dots that you would walk mm. up to, and depending on where they were on the pad, you could get different ships. You'd click on them, and then you'd pull up your Moby, and then your Moby would have a list of ships that you could spawn, and then you'd click the ship that you wanted to spawn. You'd close your Moby, you'd walk backwards, and then suddenly the ship would into existence right on top of that 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 location yeah. where you were um, if, if you wanted a, a a ground vehicle there would be like specific because uh, there was only a ptv at that point mm-hmm. um there was there like specific um sort of parking spot uh yeah. to the side of the landing pads where you could get them and then along the walls uh on the ground along the walls there would be for there would be spots for cases and and the fish tanks on the walls for posters mm-hmm. and uh, some, I, I believe some on the ground on the walkway around it it was actually quite a well thought out system and and well executed for the time but yeah you, you would also have you know stuff for the hollow tables where you could show off uh the the blueprints for port all port all or or something like that yeah you yeah. know all of that but it was basically just you would walk up to where you think you're supposed to be and, and hope to find the AR marker because sometimes they would bug, bug out because Star Citizen. Um, They're very subtle. They weren't like massive glowing orbs or anything. It was just like no, a no, circle. they would only show up. They will only show up when you were, go, we were basically on top of them as well. Yeah. Yeah. And looking straight at them. Yeah. yeah. Um, with, with CIG's kind of move away from that sort of system to being more player allow, allowings, oh, player, not allowance. Um, I won't say player forward, but I'll say player focused in terms of like allowing for players creativity to show through. Um, I imagine they'll try to have some system where you can do some attachments or things like wall wall points. But I have a feeling like you can just drop your fish tank wherever you want, you know, uh, and then just move it with your your tractor beam later. Just to kind of it's, it's a solution that's that's it's easy to solve with tractor beams because they have a lot of fine movement control that you can do stuff. Yep. So. And personal hangers will not be armistice zones, I believe, because we saw yeah. the tractor beam working in them. Yeah. Well, the tractor beams actually do work in. Um... If you are in your ship or in the actual landing if you're in the area hangar. of the yeah. hangar, yeah. yeah, but not the entire hangar. If you walk away from the landing pad section mm-hmm. of the hangar, it stops working. Yeah. Some of the easy things they could give us are like suit. Um, stands, stands yeah. and like item cases because you can put your guns in the item cases and stuff like that. Yeah, put I the armors on the suit stands. The arm, the the, the yeah. ye olde armor stands and gun racks and like 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 display cases and stuff like That's that. That's not how you pronounce that. It's and ye you know it. It's it's no, it's not. It's it's, it's the the old yeah. It's yeah, because because it was the le- it was the letter thorn that yeah. was removed when the printing press uh, invaded England. <laughs> and there was no thorn uh, in in the blocks, so they uh, they 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 replaced it with the Y. Uh-huh. Anyway, it it was it was basically the old. When you say ye, when you see ye oldy, it is pronounced the old. It's just English an or- did not change. It's just an archaic. Much. It's just an archaic spelling. It's like if you yeah, look exactly. up uh, if you look at um like like Ethelwald. Uh, the old, old, yeah. old, the old English names for like, like people like Ethelwald or or Edgar, mm. uh, you'll see them. They'll be like, they'll have or, like or, the or, a, a. I don't know what it was called. It was like an a, like a sideways a with like a like like an a, but it, it, we just with replaced a, with, with an a. Yeah, like an a, a, a with an e. It's like in the yeah. encyclopedia. Yeah, um, or you have the two sharp, um, um, the sharp s. Yeah. That was still a thing. 
Um, yeah, that's yeah. all. It just it, anyway, it just anyway, it just changes anyway, things. Anyway. I'm pedantic, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. <laughs> but it's still fun to say ye oldie. That's why I say it. Because yeah, you, it, yeah, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm talking about when I say it. But um, yeah, let's let's move on to the cargo stuff. Because you did bring up the cargo stuff a little bit. Right. Because um, right. this is... Start with STEM. I need a refresher. Okay. So STEM... Of, of, of this, not of, of the subject matter. <laughs> so just so we know. <laughs> of, uh, st so STEM, how is cargo going to change? Because we know cargo is changing for cargo players, but... How do you think cargo is going to like this change the cargo system is going to affect players uh, on a day to day basis? Wow, that's a big question. Um, yeah, because there, there's a lot <laughs> covered in the Insights Our System. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend to go check it out. Um, so, I mean, the freight elevators are a big part of that. Um, the whole process really is about getting your cargo to your ship and then taking off and, and getting someplace and then bringing it back and unloading that cargo and doing it. And thank goodness they're going to have an automated way of doing it, um, which will take time and uh, so that players, you know, and, and that's going to be the trade-off, right? Is do you want to get a group of people coming in? You've got your tractor beams. You just go, 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 go. You're loading the ship yourself. You may not, uh, you know, you may not get it as tight or efficient loading it yourself, or it's going to take, you may be able to do it quicker, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort versus having a um, an automated system do it. So, I th and that's kind of where the the uh, where we're going to find there needs to be some balancing and tuning, and there'll be a lot of complaining from the community saying, "Well, I don't want to have to load and do my own." And and well, you won't have to. You'll have an option, but it means you'll have to wait. And just like with the hanger system and we've got that you know that right weight to the ship loading into the hangar you know with all the bells and whistles the awuga sounds going off in order to create that immersion this whole issue of loading and unloading cargo is also about creating that immersion it's also about making that an authentic experience and being part of the gameplay um Trading for me is not just about buying low and selling high. It's about that barrier to entry that stops other people from trading, which is, you know, the loading and the unloading of cargo. It's all of that stuff to make it happen. It's, people will complain about trams. They'll complain about the uh, loading and unloading of cargo as well. But it creates that immersion. It creates that sort of more authentic experience. Um, I think that with the fidelity that we're going to see with this sort of changeover um it, it's going to um it's going to upset some people because of that length of time and it's mm -hmm. always going to be too long because people just want to go and do something and there's going to be that balance of well how you know that sort of credit per minute or credit per hour of investment and so there's a lot of tweaking they're going to have to do to make cargo have that balance of how much does it earn, you know, the risk reward side. So combat should probably always give you more return uh, than cargo, but cargo trading in a risky area, trading drugs, et cetera, you're not taking it. It's a smaller package, uh, you know, and there's more risk. So there's, there's going to be elements of the, of the gameplay and how it changes. So, how it affects is really that that time perspective, Paul, and and uh, time and immersion, really. Yeah. Uh, Darsh, same question to you. Like, how do you think is the the cargo is going to fundamentally affect pl play the player's experience? Maybe not just the cargo experience, like the cargo haulers experience, but players in general. Well, unless you want to go all, all, all guns blazing, you're going to have to deal with cargo at some point. Mm -hmm. um, because I would I would say that even with regular missions, if they're smart, they would have the branching missions uh, vary enough that you're gonna have to deal with some sort of transportation in one way or another. So you have mm -hmm. to figure or figure it out that way. Uh, but yeah, um, having uh, tracking cargo uh, on 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 an engine level, I want to say. Uh, having cargo be a trackable uh, resource like each cargo 
container have being its own entity that can be tracked, what what it contains, how much of stuff it contains, whether it's stolen or not, stuff like that. That is gonna uh, give give it as much. Um, well, how do I say this? The uh, importance as an NPC, I want to say. Okay. Because because it because it will have that sort of like whether whether we are transporting an NPC or we're transporting a container is going to be ha- you'll have to think about it in the same sort of ways in terms of terms of preparation. It's not just going to be a box in the back of your ship anymore because it will have consequences if you lose it, and it, it will have. Um, I hope also be able to like like what what if it's something that is more 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 valuable to you in terms of money that if you just go and sell it instead of delivering it to where it's supposed to be but then you lose reputation yeah reputation is going to be a thing with cargo as well and min maxers and and a hundred percenters are definitely going to be jumping on that yeah uh yeah um and yeah just just it's probably going to be such a big part of the star citizen community that a lot of people will actually i hope so uh will want to join in on it Mm -hmm. because there will be a big part of unexplored gameplay if you don't touch cargo yeah well i i I, i'm gonna say that i think i think cargo is such a fundamental experience to people's to people that they don't realize it because it's not just commodities it's anything you have is going to be retrieved through the cargo system now they do have the new item kiosks which are nice for those of you who don't know the item yeah. kiosks are these like basically lazy dispensers um which when they it's they start a vending machine for everything you own yeah. yeah yeah but it's a vending machine that that gives you your stuff that you have so yeah. It's like it's like a vending machine mixed with pneumatic tube uh, dis- uh, distribution, and I love it. It is, and it, it's so it's such a realistic thing that humans would create. Because how many of us have been like, I don't want to get up and get more beer, or like I don't want to get up and and go do this thing. Like I, I just did that. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was a pain. Yeah, you you were much would have much likely have just pushed a button and then just reached over and grabbed something, right? That's exactly. that's. That's effectively what this is. This is the lazy, the lazy transportation system. Like, oh, I left my gun in the in the other in the other we, hab. I'm gonna push a button now, lazy, and it's gonna come to me. Calling, we have to start calling it the lazy darge. It's the lazy darge. The lazy darge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, instead of the dumb, uh, like it's like it's like the 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 30th century version of a dumb waiter, but it's just the lazy darge. <laughs> are, you about, are you talking about the um, those kiosks? Yeah. It's called the yeah. item bank. The, the, the item, item bank. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, so you can you can get any of your FPS equipment. So any of your like personal equipment you can get from those, and uh, I lo- I love them because they like they they make sense in gameplay and they also make sense in like like logical sense. Like yeah, this this thing would exist in the 30th century. You know, human beings would d- evolve this direction to make a complicated system just to deliver like a helmet to them from across the planet. You know, um. And uh, but it wouldn't be across the planet. I I want to say that it will be tied into it's just it's the, tied like, in the local zones. inventory. But but as yeah, things yeah. but as things go forward, I think we're going to start seeing them tied into each other. So you're going to have a situation where, and and don't quote me on this, but I think the way that they'll deal deal with this is if you have stuff in your like area, like area eighteen, you can get the stuff from area eighteen if you're in area twelve but you have to go to a special express kiosk and order it from the express kiosk from area 18 and it'll take some time to get there. And then once it gets there, it gets moved into the inventory for your area 12 inventory right. to, to allow or, for transportation from point A to point B of your stuff without you having to do it yourself. That's, that's what that's well, the kind of, the or if you leave towards. something in your yeah. hab, if you leave yeah. something in your hab and you go into the, this item bank in your hangar and mm-hmm. you, you know, say, you say you press it and it says, uh, expect the time of delivery, 15 seconds. Yeah. You no. Know, and then it, then it takes down and then you just right. hear, ting, 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 I could see that happening, you know, on, on, um, uh, sorry, the big city planet, Art Corp. Um, yep. Because it is a full city, and you could have pneumatic piping going through yeah. the entire mm-hmm. thing. But you know, all the other planets that you know, it, it probably makes a lot more sense that it's courier missions 
yeah. that are that are AI driven to bring things around. So oh god, can, can, you, can you just imagine? You accept a mission to deliver, uh, like like a pizza DoorDash, DoorDash for some or, player. Or, or, yeah, like, Door, DoorDash or Met Met you know? just a single <laughs> Met pen from one person's like um, inventory I'm, in area I'm, eighteen. I'm seeing. Area 18, I'm seeing a future. <laughs> A future Kovalex, a, a future Kovalex commercial, which is like somebody's sitting there and they kind of their, their Moby Goss pops up and they have like full Kovalex gear and they're like, huh. and like 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 they they go over to like a place and they pick up a, a package and like they're they're flying down to this planet. There's like explosions going off and like Marines running around. This guy's running around with a box and he r- runs up to the Marine <laughs> and, the, uh, and the Marines like is like, oh, go great, my package is here. And he opens it up and he hands them like one Medi pen and he stabs the dude and they get up and run away. <laughs> It's like Kovalex. We'll get you there. Yeah. <laughs> what you need it, wait. we'll get it for you. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Isn't, isn't, that, yeah. isn't that a commercial from like the second or third episode of Futurama? Yeah, something like, like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like that. Your, uh, our crew is expendable. expendable. Your package, Your package is not. Is not. <laughs> uh, Brilliant. But uh, but yeah no I, I can see the system and it's a very logical system because it's a way of replacing the inventory system the way we have now without it being super inconvenient and it still kind of works in sort of like the ideas behind it and stuff um, and of course like when you when you're on like a distant planet of course you're not gonna have access to all that stuff you're just gonna have to deal with it you know because um, you know uh, <clears throat> but what was I gonna say. Um, I'm but the, 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 now. The, the system, the system itself, I think, is going to be like how you get mission items, too. So, like, just to pitch an idea. Maybe you have to set up a bomb in a location. So, like, um, like a like there's a there's a, a an outpost somewhere that's the nine tails control it. And your job is to sit, set up a. Uh, some sort of like neutron bomb to take care of the the problems, or like there's a there's a nest of of whip crabs that are that you need to go. I love to clear how out. your mind goes immediately to genocide. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about things that are goes- not cargo based, like things that are not cargo mission based and not like trading based. Um, or say you need uh, a new a new saddlebags. Like you you take your saddlebags off and you put them in for the refinery. You need to order new saddlebags. You order saddlebags and you're gonna have to go through the, the thing and pull the saddlebags in, attach them. Or um, like say you you get torpedoes. Like you need a your your torpedoes are gone. Instead of it just automatically refunding, you buy the torpedoes. You have to go to your your ha- your 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 hangar. You have to call up the torpedoes from your um, from your um, uh, from your uh, storage and then move them in and then attach them to your uh, to your ship or you can you know have them automatically loaded with a timer and that kind of stuff like there, there, there's there's so much more like like any kind of gameplay a, a, a element you can think of is going to have to deal with this new sort of freight elevator system so yeah the armament part's really big hey for for arming your missiles yeah uh, yeah placing weapons so I still wonder how that's going to work on the constellation because you, you'll, you'll maybe you'll just have to load in the missile racks onto the cargo platform, like lift it up and then one by one uh, load it up into because it's, it's all internal, right? It's all on the racks. It, well, on the it, inside it used of the cargo bay. To, it used to be that when you um, when you, you you had a stage where you could like flip them open and they would like lo- like like because like, when you they're internal, but when they launch the like the little handles like flip open. So that they like you can see there's, them. There's two. There's two different ones. There's there's the arms on the side, and there's yeah. like little launchers on the top. Yeah. yeah. So what, you, what I think you'd have to do is that you'd have to have a system where you can like press a button, and they would just open up the missile bays, and then you'd have to like load them in, and then like be a system that kind of like loads it in individually, like a loading mode or something like that. Mm. I think a lot of people will just just um just 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 go for the auto, auto reload. Auto reload. Just... Yeah. Yeah, 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 and just just let the the internal system of the hangar deal with that instead of how many missiles does the constellation hold? Like seventy five thousand. It's like sixty four size ones. Mm. Um, like the only ship that has the only vehicle that has like somewhere close to the same amount of as as the uh, as the uh, the constellation is the um, oh storm AA. Has I think has about as many missiles as the Connie right. has, <laughs> or the freelancer uh, miss. miss. Yeah. yeah. What about components? 
right? Um, you know, yeah. whether it's that's gonna have to come this up. This is a door on a miss. Nice. I don't think we have a miss. So we'll have to have the components come up uh, when we get, you know, those power relays um, and any other parts for our ship. That's all going to have to come through the freight elevator. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So like, like, there's, like you're, you're going to interact with the system no matter what you profession to. you do. You have to. Mm. And, and I think it's going to be um, a, 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 the answer to a lot of the, of the, 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 lot of the problems that we have now, like you land on a, on a landing pad and you just go refill my mission, my munitions, refill my, uh, my missiles, refill my, uh, you're just, they just kind of automatically happens. But in the future, mm-hmm. you're going to have to land, store the vehicle, hit automatically load, or you'll have to manually load these things in. So having logistics is going to be an important part of the game because a lot of these, these, yeah. these things are going to have to, are going to have to be able to be loaded through, through um, some sort of carrier system. Like say, if you have, you know, chaff launchers, you're going to have to be able to reload those chaff launchers. When you land the, your gladius back on the Idris, it's going to have to be done somehow in game mm-hmm. for players. So there's going to have to be some manual uh, process for, uh, for that. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, I'm sure you'll be able to find some people in the Star Citizen community who would much rather be doing that than oh, yeah. going out on box missions there or are, PvP or dogfighting. There yeah. are so many people who want to be Chief O'Brien or uh, the uh, what, what was the chief? Not even chief O'Brien. Chief, o, chief O'Brien tells people what to do. That's Ensign McCarthy's job. Well, no, or, or, or the, the, the chief from Battlestar Galactica. You know the the one the, the one yeah the the one who the one who who fixes all the vipers and all the kind of stuff and and you know yeah. like like that, that sort of thing like, like there are people yeah. who are all about that sort of gameplay because that's the kind of gameplay they like which is just like I need to I I you bring me a problem I have to solve this problem in a certain amount of time because I'm under pressure and that's what people want to do so do you think you know. do you think that once um that that automatic loading part let's say and and you know less about getting the component to the ship or maybe even so do you think that the freight elevator will come up and you'll have you know um loading people like loading ai that are standing in the freight elevator and they just start bringing things maybe people that are that are delivered to you via the freight elevator ooh, that that's very like first episode of star trek picard sort of vibe well, it's, it's you, kind you, of like a spawn closet in a way for yeah, AI, spawn closet spawn closet right? for 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 androids that are gonna rebel <laughs> and destroy the entire <laughs> installation listen ai is banned in star citizen for a reason right yeah right. uh yeah, yeah. I, it's, I don't i don't human slave labor is a lot more ethical <laughs> <laughs> so so um i th- that's a good question I think that may be something the CIG does in the future, but I don't think it's going to be the 1.0 version. I think the 1.0, Star Citizen oh, yeah, 1.0, yeah, we'll sure. is, is going to be what we have for this for 3.23, which is going to be you, you're, you're, you've you stored your ship and you just, yeah. and it, it'll, and, and it, there'll be a timer and you will have, like, it'll, it'll do it behind the scenes with, like, smoke and mirrors sort of situation yeah. so kind of like the like, loading of a hull scene where it just kind of yeah yeah populates right now yeah i think i think there will be a f- manual loading of the whole sea because they can't get around that like the reason why they automatically roll the do, do the do the other thing is because the automatic uh it's because you don't see it and cig is very much a if you see it it has to happen so they're gonna have to figure something yeah, out yeah but th- so. this, is, this is why i was thinking that in big uh r and r stations like like or, or a landing pads where there is a you know a a an elevator that swallows your ship and then you know stuff happens in the background and then it, your ship comes back up fully repaired and fully restocked and loaded up with juicy cargo uh that's fine but at smaller outposts where a ship is going to have to remain outside on the landing pad that's where yeah the tier 2 of this system is going to be come into play. I don't think they'll even. I'm going to stop uh, for a few seconds. We'll keep talking. 
sure. I, I don't think they'll ever even um, deal, uh, not deal, like, 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 like replace this, you know, ship goes away, ships come back, comes back at big stations just because that would be too much extra work. And as soon as something is out of sight, object permanence takes over and, you know, people are just not, just not going to care how it happens so long as it happens. But if you see it, then, yeah. Um, yeah. Then, I mean, then, it, the... Sorry, uh, Darcy. It's, it's like if you're, you know, if, if you have already spawned your ship, let's say it's a freelancer mat, max, and you've got the the gate down and you're automatically loading, you're just going to see it kind of pop in right now. Um, let's say you land a freelancer max at a um, at a, an external hangar, um, so something that's on the outside, you'll have to, I mean, will there be some kind of freight elevator that comes up to those, to those external pads, um, that you take a trolley to and go grab the stuff and bring it out? Or will you just not be able to eventually, I don't know, how will pads work for a freight hanger? It's, it's not a personal hanger, no. but I can imagine, well, right. Yeah. I, I can imagine I mean, the, like, the 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 uh, the exterior paths that have the freight elevator doors yeah. already, yeah. Because like there and there are, uh, we already saw like the, like a sneak preview of like like landing zones where like they have the 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 ele the, the freight elevator, an elevator attached to the exterior um, landing pads. So it's obviously some sort of underground storage system or whatever. But uh, I also don't think uh, like as Darge was saying, I don't think we're going to see. They won't have to. Ha you won't have that 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 like sleight of hand trick that you could do with automatically loading. And I think the answer is that CIG is just gonna make you load stuff manually at some point. Like, you can't get around it in some areas. Like the areas um, that are yeah, wild, well, wild west. You know. Yeah. Unless you know you just you know just go around. Here's money. Do yeah. it for me, and then you'll have an NPC that basically goes through all the exact motions as you would have to. Yeah, maybe that just at some time. point. But that's that's yeah. I don't I don't know I don't know if we'll because that's that that leads a lot more failure options. So it may just be mm -hmm. like especially in like some outposts, just maybe do it yourself. I'm not being paid for it. Like, even if it's like oh well, if I had money, they'd be like I don't care. <laughs> so I don't I don't yeah. get <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, oh, I, trying to load in Aberdeen, that, like, 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 fuck you! I already work in Aberdeen, and I'm not gonna try to. You're not gonna make me stay out, stay out for like thirty minutes to not, an hour not loading, my, loading your Connie. <laughs> not everybody my has problem. a brain. Or, or, or as Douglas Adams put it, it's SPI. Somebody else's problem. No, SAP. SEB. Somebody else's problem is one of my most favorite phenomena in human society. Like, as soon as it's some out of someone. Sorry, an employee's purview. Yeah, it, it's just it, it's almost as if does it doesn't exist. So. Yeah, it's realistic, and I also think it adds to the yeah. gameplay elements. Like if you're going to the remote parts of the galaxy, you're gonna have to do some work, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and those are the areas that you can exploit for the most resources, or the most most profit, or the most reputation. But you're also gonna. It's just harder. You're just gonna have to do stuff your own on your own, you know. Yeah, pull up, pull up the pull up the bootstraps, to... roll up your sleeves, get get going, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going back to Futurama, it was in episode two. I was like, <laughs> oh, if I wasn't this lazy, I'd punch you in the stomach if I wasn't this lazy. You are lazy, right? Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> no. But yeah, right. uh, it's like I I want those sort of NPCs in game, the, the the guys that give you lip just because they're not being paid to do something. You do it. Yeah, I'm just gonna the the those on this chair. The guy, the guy who's like, I'm not even supposed to be in here today. You know, just just yeah, put it no. back. Why can't anyone put it back? You know, put it back when they found him. That that dude. I need that that oh. energy on the uh, on the cargo elevator deck. Like I'll pay you money. No, no, you can't pay me enough. I'm, I'm just. Kitty, Kitty, it's realistic. Yeah, I, I haven't worked in retail, but I have dealt with enough retail workers, so. I mean, yeah, I've worked, I, I've worked, I, I, I have worked in retail as well, and it is 100 percent realistic. If you're, if, if I'm not being paid to do that, to do that job, I'm not going to do that job, and unless, unless the, the manager specifically is looking at me, is like you're doing this job. And after a certain point, it's like, cool. Am I gonna get a bonus? Am I gonna get overtime? Like, like this I'm, is. Am I being paid to do this job? Yeah, yeah. When I worked in retail many, many moons ago, the customer was always right. Yeah, <laughs> and the manager was always there. 
Yeah. So you just did anything people asked, really. Okay, back to being a pedantic nice asshole. <laughs> back to being a pedantic asshole. That saying has a second part. Is it? I mean, you haven't heard about the, the second part. Of yeah, that the, the, cus the customer is always right in terms of taste. So you can't you can't say them no you can't buy this beige stand to go with your bright green bed. Mm -hmm. No, you have to say yes to everything they want to buy. But the customer isn't always right when it when it so comes to. It's a to... style question. It's like it's it's yes. don't critique yes. us. If they come in wanting weird stuff, don't say no. Just let them buy the stupid yeah. things. Yeah. Yes, but the managers, the, you know, the middle managers have adopted that phrase to mean, no, go ahead, abuse my workforce. Yeah. Uh, Fuck I off. I think I think it could still. It, it's it still, has been ten minutes, right? I can swear. Yes. <laughs> okay. I do. I do think it kind of still 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 works that way because when I was working in retail, it was a lot of uh, like especially with customer service. It was like you're going to do your best to make sure the customer is happy, but. You're not going to like you could do everything up to the short of like losing money for the company. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna do things to help them out in case something goes wrong. You know, if someone someone comes in and has a bad day, they're like, I'm going to uh like return this item because this, 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 and this happened, this happened. And you're just like, That's fine. As long as it's not destroyed, we're good, we'll take it back, you know, that kind of thing. It's that sort of mentality of like meet people where they are rather than being like 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 please step on my back sir you know um but at the same time I just, I just, if i wasn't working in customer service and someone is like i need you to help load uh, load load the, the truck or unload the truck for me and i'm like i'm already swamped in customer service stuff it's not my job uh it's not my department you know is is that is the is the is the, uh, <laughs> the the phrase not my department um so anyways I think that's kind of a good discussion for for their hangers and uh, and uh, cargo. I think we really really kind of hit on home the 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 full breadth of like just how fundamental a lot of this stuff is going to change. And I do think it's going to be for the better. But I do want to have the final thoughts before we move into the question and answers. And I'll start with you, Darge, on this one. Do you think this is a positive move by CIG to 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 like overall with the whole package? Do you think this is a this is a better thing for the game than what we have now. Yes, yes, because it's always meant to be a super immersive and not sorry. I'm, I'm out of alcohol. I can't even. I can't even <laughs> do the drinking game anymore. Yeah, it's meant to be an expansive, uh, do everything game, and yeah, I believe that it is. It doesn't go too far. I, th I think the the way they've described it, it's. It's complex just enough for the stage of development. And yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it because it will, it, if nothing else, it will make me sit around and, you know, do stuff around my ship more so I'll be able to appreciate how good it looks. Yeah. <laughs> Stim, is this a good, is this a good, is this a positive move by CIG? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's part of the evolution towards what this game is going to be. I mean, if, to really kind of roll it up into a nutshell, um, I, the only negative things that I can see are really just the complaints of change um, mm -hmm. and people, you know, saying, "Oh, I signed up for a game that was a lot simpler a long time ago, and now I'm." You know, I, waiting still for the features that I, I want. I signed up for a single player game. Hello. <laughs> uh, I, I'm confused about about Star Citizen being simple. From the, from the day one, I've been I've been playing this game. I'm like, they've always said they wanted to make this game complicated, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. But it depends on how much you listen to the nuance of what was That's being true. said versus you know just the Kickstarter or, or what have you. So, um, yeah, it's it's a positive change. It's all going in the right direction. I like the balance of immersion that they have. I mean, Paul, you said you know um, with with the with the the item bank the, that system, you know how it could be like a pneumatic system. Yeah. You know, we can imagine a way that it works. Yeah. Um, and we can imagine with the with the uh, ship storage that there's some kind of carousel or yeah. delivery system for your ship there. So it's got that right balance of, I feel like 
the game is persistent and immersive um you know and it's it's on its way and it's going to get to that point where um if you can see it it's actually happening and i like that uh some people just want to get in there and jump into arena commander and they can still do that. Um, and some people want to actually have that immersion. So I think it's good. Um, yeah. yeah. All positive. I, I, I'm going to echo everything else. I think it's positive. I think it's going to be, a, it's going to make the new player experience better. Um, and it, it's a, it's a way of doing so in an immersive way. It's because we really aren't losing a lot of what the functionality we have now. It's just now immersive. So instead of, hitting I yeah instead of hitting I and just having everything you own on a screen you go to a dispenser and hit I and now you have everything you own on the screen or every every yeah. certain certain amounts and you go to a kiosk and you hit you, you hit a button and now you have everything it's just like a step or more beyond what you have to do now and they there, seem there to be are really user to experience sure. good there are user experience purists who would say that like the more times you have to click the more sub menus you have to go to to get to the same function the worse it is or you know in this case the more steps you have to take to get to the same point the worse it would be but there is also a certain mentality to to saying like if you just want the simplest thing if humanity always wanted just what worked and any sort of progress or change was bad Still be living in caves. <laughs> well, I also, I also think that it's, it's actually going to be simpler because if you want to get your equipment, your like FPS equipment, you go to an item kiosk. It's not going to have the list, the reams of stuff you have for your hangar or any of your ships or anything else yeah. like that. It's just going to be your FPS equipment and like the handheld stuff. Yeah. So it's going to be convenient, easy to do. And then when you go, because like right now you have to click through so many different like places to get there. And it's like, it's especially for, yeah. for people like us who've been around for, you know, five plus years in terms of uh, like, like, like hanging out. We've got so much hangers, flare and other things that are just strewn about and just taking there up space. There was already so much bullshit when you had to outfit a single Aurora with the holo table. Yeah, you remember the scrolling and scrolling and scrolling on yeah. the little circular menu that you, yeah. if you wanted to get to, to just like the right missile that you that you could uh, attach to the damn thing is like, yeah, yeah, it's gotten better, it. it's gotten simpler, and and that's good. And but it's also I also don't see it fundamentally changing that much, except for the fact that now you have that extra step of you have to load it or there's going to be a timer loading if you want to do your commodities and put it into your ship. But it also allows for flexibility. Now you can buy a commodity and just sit on it. You can leave it in your hangar and just you can come back and grab that commodity later if you need to. So, so something I just remembered something that Salty Mike actually brought up is like when you're doing mining, mm -hmm. you don't have to, you know, go uh, like like you land your prospector and you have to go to the um uh especially if you're if you're in a system that doesn't have a refinery like like in area space does have doesn't have a refinery you bef now you have to go to the to to you know quite a distance away land uh go get to out. refinery unload get back into the prospector go back now you could just go uh to the nearest station mm -hmm. store the unrefined ore in your in your cargo mm -hmm. and go and come back and go and come back and go and then bring load all that unrefined ore into a big ship with a lot of cargo and take that ship to a refinery, to a refinery. yeah and they just do it all so, at once so, so yeah yeah so and g g giving you agency and authority over uh like more more granular authority over what you own yeah the, the, i feel like the system is going to be um allowing you yeah uh, oh, sorry. I just, I just realized that there was a golden kappa in chat, and I'm like, wait. I thought the golden kappa was only. I guess it's just a random, random chance of getting golden kappa. But yeah, good, good job. Uh, inner hype. Um, I didn't know if that was a special, a special emote or not. But uh, what is it gonna say? Yeah, I think in general, it, 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 this is better. I think this is a system that's better, and it's more along, uh, more aligns with what CIG wants it to be, and will be more flexible down the line. Uh, and I still the think entire universe, the entire. 
the entire way of interacting with the Star Citizen, Star Citizen universe is going to be more diegetic. And there's a lot of Golden Kappas. What the fuck is going on? It's inner hype. Uh, inner hype has him. <laughs> I don't know how, but he or, is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, it's 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 you know one of the one of the words on the Star Citizen bingo, apart from immersive, you know, and and fidelity is and cinematic, diegetic. Yeah, no, diegetic. Yes, but I say it's it's immersive, yeah. cinematic, um, fidelity, uh, fidelity, and 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 diegetic. Yeah, diegetic. Yeah. So. yeah. So 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 I, even though it's maybe a couple of clicks more. Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind it if it's obfuscated just enough so it doesn't feel like it pops out of non-existence randomly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I you know, just I, like spawn closets for NPCs, and this is going to be a spawn closet for uh for yeah. your inventory. And the elevator, you know, the big elevator is going to be a spawn closet for your ship, and freight elevator is going to be spawn closet for your for your for your big stuff. So as, as soon as soon as it is able to hide before it is before it disappears, I'm fine with it. And then another way of looking at this is with a single player game, it would have that level of fidelity. You know, it would have the ship coming out of the out of the ground or what have you it wouldn't just automatically spawn there in a single player game that's almost the difference between an mmo and a single player game in a lot of cases is you know it's they they, they skip these finer things these these um fidelity uh areas that you have to have in a single player game and to be able to do it on a larger scale is so much more complicated so i really like how cig has taken you know they've worked on it in squadron 42 and then brought it to us and this year is a super exciting year for all of the features that we're getting this just being one of them that was probably predominantly designed uh, initially for the single player experience keeping in mind what the full uh, pu experience needed to be like so that's great awesome all right, let's, I think that's going to be the end of our kind of discussion-based. We're going to move into the question and answers. If you're listening to this on the the audio podcast, you'll just hear us roll right into it because I'll kind of edit that little part out. If you're watching this on, on uh, YouTube, this is where I remind you to like the video, subscribe for content like this if you're enjoying these sorts of things, and hit the bell icon to be notified when this is released. If you're watching us live on Twitch, make sure you hit that follow button. If you enjoy this, we do this on Saturdays. Uh, we might be moving this to an earlier time period. Um, well, I don't. I didn't see what was going on, so I was so so focused on. on the I, I I I flicked my glass to do like the bell the, the sound, bell? but I did it way too hard. And I <laughs> my finger. You're gonna, you're gonna get a blood blister for sure. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Oh, the um, we might be doing this in an earlier time, so do let me know in chat or in the in the comments if you enjoy an earlier time because normally we stream. I do this at about uh, six p.m. Eastern, which is about uh. Uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, um, but moving a little earlier to uh, 4 p.m. P- uh, Eastern, which would be uh, uh, noon Pacific, I think, uh, or uh, Defin- one. Definitely for your European viewers, it would be easier yeah, uh, it moves, because it, you would start at midnight. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and for like for the UK time, this would, it would be about around uh, like 9 or 10 p.m. Mm. for the UK. So it's a uh, it's 1 p.m. Okay, so so, so it, it kind of makes it easier. The reason why I think about moving it earlier is because it just makes it easier for people from Europe to participate and to watch. Um, and uh, I, I want to get more folks from across the the pond to, to talk. Uh, and that's been that's been a big hang up every time I talk about it. It's a, usually someone's like, "Yeah, I'd love to, to to do it," but it's like 2 a.m. my time when you start, and it's like, "Jeez." <laughs> yeah, same for the yacht club. Yeah. So. Um, yep. <laughs> so we'll see. Let me, let me know. Um, uh, this, this would be earlier, by the way, for chat, chat's asking this would be earlier. This, this is earlier than it normally is. So, uh, so, but I've been talking about doing it and thinking about doing it more frequently. I'm, I'm doing it earlier now for a different reason, but yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, thank you for watching and, uh, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to grab some of the drink, go grab some of the drink and eat. Cause it's, a. Uh, Oh gosh, I'm looking at the the, the, the number. Um, it is currently sitting at 33 questions. 
which oh, I'm gonna pause. Dear God. Yeah. So I'm pausing it, and we're gonna go through through this. So we'll be right back, Chad. Don't go anywhere. Right back. Okay.
Oh, we were muted. No. Yeah, you were muted the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was I was hoping that I was Tim and I regaling chat with stories of cheese and and ales and Citizen Con would uh would 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 be you know beneficial to chat, but no. Yeah. No. No, I'm I am I am a I am a dictator when it comes to this sort of thing. Um <laughs> so welcome back to the question and answer session with uh uh, Darionator and Stim Citizen. Uh, so make sure to check out um, Yacht Club on Twitch and YouTube and uh, at jrdf.sc uh, for your model model needs and uh, the Yacht Citizen podcast. We're counting or, uh, Bar down the days. We're counting down the days until we can finally start up the store again. But le legal reasons and and tax reasons are are why. Why we're, we're, we're still waiting, unfortunately. Nice. All right. So let's go through these questions. We have 33. We're going to try to go through as fast as possible. Um, some some may, some may have been doubled and that kind of stuff. So uh, with that being said, let's start with Shimpasta, who asks, now that the persistent hangers are upon us, can I see players uh, need, I can see players needing to clean them up. Do you all think we'll get Darionator? I mean, janitor gameplay now? <laughs> The janitor, yeah. the dark janitor. Uh, no, I I would love to do mocap for for CIG as <laughs> as a very as a like a like a not a grumpy but like a very a scruffy very sinister, no no very very sinister sounding oh. janitor who, who really you know who is determined to do their job but are going to complain about it a lot all the time and not just complain like like why do i have to be this like like, you know, I'm, like very explicitly you know dark stuff like like like, I'm gonna get know, job like, done. like a like vampire you know them. <laughs> what, about the, what about the quiet janitor that doesn't really say much but has these pearls of wisdom you know and there's something mystical about him no, no, we're not. We're not doing. We're not doing the the the, the magic space janitor. We're 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 doing the dark janitor. It's the it's the janitor that that every time they speak, it's a, it's something like cryptically and really dark about like 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 how to clean up blood. Um, yeah. the the best way of cleaning up blood, you know, the, the, that kind of guy. Um, the hot machine repairman. That's what I'm yeah. looking for. Yeah. Dire directed by Christopher Nolan. Was that was that actually directed? Was that Hot Tub Time Machine Maybe. directed by Christopher Nolan? No, I, no. <laughs> I was gonna say no, going that to would be fucking time. hilarious. But yeah, Hot Tub Time Machine as if it was directed by Christopher Nolan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, Northern Trooper asks, "Do you think there is going to be a player cap for hangar instance? Can I have my entire org in my personal hangar?" I believe you probably could. I mean, it's going to be whatever the the server cap is. Almost certainly depends on your org is. Yeah, true. With with the you know very successful static server meshing tests being done right now and dynamic server meshing on the horizon, you could potentially have your personal hangar be its own server, and you can have like a hundred person party in there. More than that, you probably have thousand yeah. person party in there. You know. Okay, um, let's not go. Let's not go that far. <laughs> I don't think you could fit a thousand bodies into these servers, or like hangers. Mm -hmm. um, there, even if there's eight ninety sized, uh, eight ninety jump sized hangers, I don't think the, that has that much room. Um, uh, you can, this is like a concert venue almost, though. Uh, all right, uh, Northern Trooper asks. So, f uh, so far we are only on phase two of Xeno Threat Event. What are your thoughts of your experience with it so far? The Overdrive um, initiative stuff. 
Uh, Stim, have you done the Overdrive Initiative at all? No, you know, I've been following along um, to people that have been playing along with it. I hear it's a great time, um, but I, I'm not the first person to, to really uh, approach on this one. Hmm. Darsh? Unfortunately, me neither. I was going to I was gonna play some with friends today, and when I, we were going to do the first stage. Is that still available? <laughs> it should be. I, I, be- it should I be, believe. Yeah. It's supposed so. to be every two weeks, but then they're also yeah, rolling yeah. out each week, so I'm not but, really sure. But all the old missions are still going to be available if you haven't done them until the event is finished, I, yeah. I'm told. Be so... Great. Yeah, we were gonna do that today, so we're gonna you know, grab a couple of people and go in with a hammerhead and and do stuff. Uh, but then I didn't hear from them, and then the show started earlier than expected. Yeah, so, there you go. Uh, uh, I I've played it. Um, my experience is the first event is my favorite type of mission because really what the what, the, what CIG is doing is they're taking missions that already exist in game and then uh, chaining them together. That's what they're doing, which is cool. Uh, so, like, the first one's Data Heist. Uh, second one is a uh, bounty hunting mission, which is... There's some bounty hunting missions where you have to kill the person, uh, like, destroy a ship, and then get, like, a piece of cargo from the um, from the ship. It's, like, I think this was, like, the assassination missions or something like that, where you, like, you have to, you have to retrieve... Or retrieval missions, I think is what they're called. I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. what they're called. But they're a mission where you attack a target, kill them, get some cargo, put it in your ship, and then deliver it to uh, a location... It's the same thing. So, like, they're taking assets that already exist, like missions that already exist, and then kind of tweaking them and and moving them. So, my hope is that we're, the the last version we're going to get is the Arlington missions, um, because the, the to end with Ooh, a big bang. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, are you detecting a a potent pungence of Elliot Maldby on these missions? Uh, possibly. I I don't think Elliot's done a lot of them because there's that, there was somebody, I forget who it was. It was either in my chat or some other chat. Somebody, one of the mission designers showed up. I think it was in Mike's chat who talked about the designing of the missions and explained it like, like that they did like mission five, mission four. So, um, yeah. So. Hi, writers. Hello, everyone from A1 stream. Welcome. We're in the question and answer session, so we're, we stream a little earlier than we normally do, but we've been talking a bit about cargo and uh, that kind of changes and everything. So, mm. um, I'm Darge. That's Stim. That's Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, but but I so like it's a unique take on it. I think the first one was fun, and the second one was pretty easy. I think like the the, the second phase is, is is probably a little too easy in my opinion, um, mm. because it's really just. Like the first two missions, the first it's only three three chain instead of the five chain. The first one is, and that three chain mm. is, um, uh, like two slightly hard missions. Like like the, the, I think you have to kill like a like a Valkyrie or, uh, a Cutlass or something like that, and then get that. And they're usually guarded by a couple of fighters. And then the last one is a Hammerhead you have to kill. So it's like a little difficult, but you know, it, uh, people could solo uh, uh could possibly solo the second. Um, overdrive mission chain and I think you'd still need about four people to do the first overdrive mission chain so oh know. wow okay um, so it's not terrible but it's definitely uh, uh, it's easy to do it's designed to be a, 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 like inclusive for more people to play it and do it I've been doing them with uh, Loken on Fridays and his whole org so we show up with like half the server kick down the doors shoot everyone um and do do the, so it's, it feels super easy because like there's literally one or two people at every spawn closet staring at with a gun mm-hmm. while, while we're doing the, the the mission heist and uh we just send like a like a like a swarm when we're doing the missions because it was like we all would wait, wait for it we'd all come in and then it would be like 14 ships firing missiles at one target. It's like it plus torpedoes. Like they're not going to survive this. It's just, just, just the barrage that's going to hit these ships is insane. So, you know, they're, they're not, t- they're not designed for people like us who are going in way too hard. <laughs> uh, but I do like these ideas. This is taking, taking assets you already have and turning them into events that you can do. them. I like that idea. And I do, I do think that Elliot's still the head of that team, right? The, the mission teams, like the mission feature team. Yeah. Mm. Is he, though? I thought... Mm. 
I thought he was. I think he was the lead. He might not it might not be the lead. He may just be the lead in in like the UK. But uh, uh, but I he is. Uh, well, let, let, I think I don't think he's the lead. But hold on. Um, I think it's still Luke Presley who's lead. Okay. But this 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 uh well, this this, this does feel like using the assets you have to make more interesting like 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 utilizing the systems that they've built finally to do something yeah as like a as like a proto a prototype for something greater which is what a lot of these sort of missions for ships kind of are like the 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 idris mission one and then the um uh the f8 they all feel like prototypes for something bigger than just the ship and they're using the ship as a little dangle like hey get the ship um, as a means to try to convince people to play. So, mm. um, but, uh, and thank you for that $20 there, uh, or 20, 20, 20 pounds, actually, 20 pounds from plastic death, uh, who said first time I've managed to catch you live. I'm in the UK and have kids. So keep up the good work. So yeah, like I said, um, let us know, yeah. mm. let us, let me know if, uh, if this is a good time for y'all because you know, it's easier for some of y'all to watch, yeah. uh, or, or uh, be on. Yeah. Uh, no other trooper asks. Jared mentioned uh, of uh, mention of a studio tour. Will we see the video studio tour of the UK office for those who can't attend CitizenCon in the UK this year? Almost certainly, they'll show off image, images of it. The problem, the reason why, and um, uh, this is this is not an NDA. Technically, I don't think I didn't sign an NDA about this, but I do know that the reason why they're not doing it is because some of those like parts of the new new things are straight up spoilers for squashing 42. <laughs> like there's some, there's some straight up stuff that's just like, Oh, and I've seen them yeah. because we've made them. Yeah. They're made by JRDF. That's the reason why I know about it is because people in JRDF kept like, check this out, check this out. And it's like, God, God damn it. <laughs> and by, by people in JRDF, he means me. <laughs> it's, it's Darge. Darge is sending me images of the studio. It's cool. It's really cool. The in, the the it, it is it is it is on par, I think, with Bethesda, or or oh, like id. Uh, uh, like, I I I will say there was a sneak peek of something mm -hmm. in the Squadron Forty Two. Uh, I held line video when they had the little the talking heads right after you know when started off with a pan towards the building and then yeah. it had a couple of people um if you look in the background of those you will see some assets although they use very good lenses so it's quite you know out of focus mm -hmm. um because they still want to do but i did recognize something that i made yeah nice that was there was that was so cool to see um it's it's very neat but it is it's hmm. spoilers, but it's in very the very spoilery. oh god, yes, it, a, a lot of it isn't, but some of it is. Yeah, yeah. It, but it, I wouldn't say it's spoilery in the sense of like anything that CIG hasn't already spoiled because they can, um, which is <laughs> and surprisingly of the time a lot. Jared did this thing. Yeah, but it, it's it's if you want to go into Squadron Forty Two entirely blind, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go into the squad for you entirely blind. You don't want to watch that studio tour because there are some plot elements which are spoiled in that. So, um, mm. um, but I do like it. A lot of it, a lot of it is cool. There's some statues. There's um, uh, there's a lot of glass work, which I know. I, I, I now that you say JRDF was responsible. I'm like, oh yeah, I know. I know what they're doing. That damn laser printer, the laser laser cutter that they have that they like to do the little little in cuts for everything. Of course they, they have that cool stuff. Um, there's a lot of intricate glass work and, and other things like that. It's it's not too different from what we've seen. If you've seen the old studio or you saw like the LA studio where if you look at some of the offices in the background, they have these like little like like laser printed glass um, that have different names on them, like like re like retaliator room, and you know. Uh, uh, I think retribution. retribution was was the main conference room, yeah, in yeah. the uh, LA studio. Mm. So, that's kind of thing. It's it's neat, yeah. um, and almost certainly it's, they'll show it off. A lot, but be careful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, functionally, the studio has been running for a while now, but it's all the visual additions, the cladding, the wall cladding, mm. the statues, and the. Uh, accessories, the props. no, yeah. the props and everything. Yeah, that that's that's what's holding it up, and it's been 
as a lot of ambitious things as well. That's why it's been taking a while. So what Darge is saying is, is that there's an entire scale model, uh, one-to-one scale model of the retribution that's hanging in the studio. In fact, the, the studio is just a retribution that's stood, stood up on its end. That's, that's, that's the... You do realize how... the. If you stood up the retribution <laughs> on its end and use it as the building, it would be five times as tall as the Burj Khalifa. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Uh, it's a, a one-sixth model. There we go. That's the entire building. Yeah, it's sure. one-sixth yeah, model. Yeah, the, the Burj Khalifa is a one-sixth model of retribution. <laughs> there we go. Um, but so, so I will say, I do think that we'll get a studio tour. I just think that they'll either cover oh. up some of those aspects or, or they're gonna be, make it very clear that there's spoilers in here. Don't watch this if you if it's. Uh, if you want to. I don't. I don't know if we'll have like an in-person studio tour. No, no, no. At not Citizen Con. I mean, definitely like a not. Video. Uh, like a video. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. But then they'll just put it on YouTube like they did with the Squadron Forty Two trailer. So yeah, that's, that, that was the, the, what the question was. Is, yeah. Was like, will yeah. we get a video studio tour? And I think yeah, they'll just cover oh, yeah, up some of the definitely. spots. So. They've they've been they've been hyping that up for so long to not have like an eight K video on YouTube about it is going to be a disaster. A crib style for- video with with Chris Roberts going around and, and showing everybody. Oh, <laughs> He's, he's just gonna go to every room in the building and yeah. just go, and this is where the magic happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, next question comes from Cordan, who asks: Given the rapid progress on testing, um, uh, testing server meshing, we're seeing, how confident are you on a 4.0 release for 2024? Stim, do you think we're gonna have 4.0 4. in 2024? 4.0? Yeah. No. No, Does, even no. though we're we're kind of iterating super quickly on some of those uh, the server meshing, like being testing right now, it's like in March. You know, um, I don't know. It's it's me. I feel like I've been banging my head up against the locker for so long. Yeah, you know that. It, it, and and if your head kind of pulls off the locker, it's like it feels weird. It feels different. Like this freedom from pain is just something that I'm not expecting. So. I just at some point I'm just gonna have to start hitting my head against the locker again to to get that back. I was habitualized, so I don't yeah. know. I just it, it could happen. It could happen. It's just um, I don't know. It, it, you know, we're now calling it 1.0 essentially, right? Uh, no, no, 1.0 is different from no. 4.0. Let's describe the difference. Do you want to? Do you want to put that through? Because well, we don't a- know because the reason why we haven't have the, the progress tracker the uh, progress tracker update is because they're still figuring out. What 1.0 is, but we do know what 4.0 is. Okay, which so is let's find jump points to Pyro. Right, right. Define, define 1.0 or define 4.0? 4.0. So if, if 4.0 is defined as jump points in Pyro, mm-hmm. you know, with persistent entity streaming, with yeah. uh, server meshing, with all of that stuff too, it's it's the server meshing part that I'm held up on. I don't think I don't think we I think we could get Pyro uh, this year. Um, I think we could get jump points this year. Um, it's the server meshing. It's coming together. I just worry because we've had so many hiccups and now, you know, we managed to get through it. We managed to get something, but it, they had to keep going back to the drawing board every time to to get what they got to now. So I don't know. How they've, big never, they've never been this far though. Oh no, I, I, I get it. I get it. By far, by far. And hopefully it means that there's no need to actually have to, I mean, the last times they had to can all the work, yeah, right? Because it wasn't doing what they wanted. And I think, yeah. and what what we saw at CitizenCon was really rudimentary, like only weeks before that, like literally a few weeks before that, had they even but, discovered the new way of doing it. No, so no, we're they talking didn't, with no, 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 but you're missing the they didn't discover they didn't discover the new way of doing it. They had known exactly how to do it for years now. Ever since they they dumped uh what was it? The um not what I'm blanking on it. Uh blah, blah, blah. help me out, Paul. Oh, you're talking uh, about um, PS. Oh, um uh, the uh, old database entity entity graft. No, no, no the, we right. have iCash. Uh, iCash. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since they dumped iCash, they had known how to do it 
it's just taken them this long to actually do it. Yeah. And and it was in Ivocati, so I can't share anything. But I took I did take the jump point to Pyro and from Pyro back to Stanton. And there was a hitch. But it worked. Yeah. And right now they're testing eight an eight hundred strong shard of Stanton with in, how many servers? Five, six? In the defense in defense of Stim. Defense yeah. what Stim is saying is that he's twice uh, once bitten, twice shy. He's been yeah. down this road before. He has seen this 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 before. And while it is impressive that they're what we're seeing, he's hesitant to say that they're going to get one hundred percent going to get four point and all their yeah. technology is working in the next six months. Because while and, it and is it, March, it's like they want to get us released in summer, and, and it's, it's like, not once bitten. It's you know, it, there, thousand there times bitten. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it was a swarm. Yeah, so so I don't know, but not to get too much into the. Um, into the 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 technology side but from some conversations that i had that i was um i was able to to listen in on it it honestly sounded like like the technology that was going forward was really just tried out just before citizen con mm. and and that's why we got those you know those really those two spaces are put together it wasn't like they would have done a larger demo if they had more it, yeah. it, you know i understand two spaces is is clearer just to have two for passing things through but i think it was three you know, though yeah, it was three because it, it was like an l-shaped thing so you needed occlusion yeah, yeah. between but yes right so so between those conversations, I'm just looking at this going, you know what, it, it's, I would love to have it. I, we, we've got some very positive experiences in what we're seeing. I don't know what else is missing. And maybe CIG doesn't know what barriers they're going to hit as they go along. And as they, as they do this testing, they're going to find things. So, you know, sometimes the diagnosis, uh, like finding a problem in that process and then diagnosing it and then solving it, you know, that's 90% of the work before the even solving part is, and you don't know, you don't know. So I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Let's put it okay. that way. But I, I will just say that whatever the bare minimum of what CIG has said it for cons constitutes 4.0, is which pyro is pyro, but, but server meshing just is a minimum of one server handling Stanton and one no server one handling pyro and then having a jump point in between them they have already in february developed uh d demoed that was it in february or was it march early march early march it was early march early march but yes so they have at least on a smaller scale a functioning prototype of what constitutes 4.0 in their like the minimum of 4.0 in what they have announced Nine months is still a lot of time for them to polish it and get it mm -hmm. out, I would say. Uh, but I do understand that there are a lot of things that could go wrong as concurrency is ramped up, as mm -hmm. uh, a lot more more people get into it. And But they are also testing this now with 800 strong charts. Yeah, I, I just worry that you're using the term polish already. Yeah, polish, polish, as in you haven't seen it. It was Not a polish, turd. Polish. <laughs> no, no, you oh. haven't seen it. It was a turd. It was a. It it was it bad. Was a, an, it's a gray it void. An, an, it's a gray it void. An, an, an intestine in space. It's a gray That's intestine in space. Is what it was. Yes. It was. It was untextured. Un. It was just. It just looked like a. It was. It was like yeah. not even version one. It was like. Ver, it was. It was. Somebody took the textures from some demo and then threw it on top of it and then didn't bother even like rendering it properly. It's and just. They just used the pure, pure basic geometry without any shading, without any yeah. textures, without any effects, and that's what they had the jump point tunnel be but other than a hitch it worked it worked yeah yeah that's fantastic i i i will say i believe 4.0 is going to make it. by a hitch i just mean a stall in frame rate for about a quarter of a second also slamming you know? into other ships but i mean that was that's a that's a completely different yeah <laughs> 
That that was that crash is issues. Star yeah, that, that is just star <laughs> Well, it's, it, quantum was like that too for a while. You just when you get out of quantum, you just like into straight into other ships as they yeah. come out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I will say that I think that I almost I, I am like ninety five percent sure we will get four point this this year. Not because it's uh, like like somehow CIG is ahead of the game or anything. I just think that CIG is at the point where they need to push four to get it done. And if they get minimum viable product of 4.0, they'll push it. I think, I also think that CIG, the tech team right now is currently, it feels like they're not really, they were surprised at how well this, uh, the, the, the tech, the, the test did with, uh, with the jump points and everything. Cause the original test wasn't, didn't even have the jump points. It was just two, it was Pyro and Stanton running at the same time into a single, um, uh, on, um, uh, that was like late late February too. It was like un uh, un jump pointed mesh. So like there's two servers connected to one back end server, and it seems like they were expecting it to have a lot more problems than it did. Which is why they immediately went, let's throw a jump point in there and see what happens. That's why because it's obvious that yeah. they just don't have the final assets, and it was just a last minute decision oh, that, of just like the, let's go, let's do one, it, let's, let's one, see what happens. One thing. <laughs> One thing that it was also missing that I, I realized I forgot to mention is that it just seemed like they took your coordinates in Stanton and just transposed them to your coordinates in Pyro. Yeah. So you popped out on completely the other side of the system where the jump point was. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it... all, but all that means is as you're in the tunnel, they need to teleport you from one side of the st- uh, system to another. And... That kind of should work. Thank yeah, you. It, it's it's just, just just increase the duration of time you're in the uh, uh, in the in the tunnel if you need to take if 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 streaming stuff out and streaming stuff in and then teleporting you from one location to another. It's it, it takes longer. It's beyond the initial steps, is what it is, and that's I think mm-hmm. that's what's what's really encouraging is that it's beyond the initial steps, and the tech team is is uh, the the. Um, the 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 oh, why am I I already, I'm like I've already like like exuded the Star Wars uh, sequels from my brain I don't remember everybody's name, um, uh, Ben Solo uh, I think his name's Ben right uh, yeah Darth yeah. Kylo Ren Kylo, Ren's Kylo Ren, Ben Kylo Solo Ren. yeah yeah Kylo Ren with that, that Kylo Ren gif of of, of more more that's that's cig right now in terms of just like let's yeah. let's pile these 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 uh these bodies into that phone booth and see when it breaks like the no, dropping but, but 800 it's not, people it's not just it's not just cig that's doing the more thing it's the community that is, that has caught whiff of blood in the water yeah we want to break things <laughs> yeah but but it's but not just that it's yeah i'm back on the hope train yes You've, your hope mm-hmm. is returned yeah. yeah, not the hype train, the hope train. Yeah, because because I wasn't expecting it to work. Yeah, but I don't think CIG was either. I was in, I was <laughs> one second I was in Stanton, the other second I was in Pyro, and I could go to all the planets, and it was the Pyro from the the tech preview that we had. Yeah, and then I go back, and then I went back in the same in the same session. It's they they're, they're I don't want to say they're pulling it off, but they are very close to pulling it off, and that is mm. where the hope comes from. And I'm imbued with the same sort of uh, not the dream, the, the 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 aspirations as I did when I first learned about Star Citizen of what it could be, mm-hmm. you know. I, I can't help but be this positive about it. Unfortunately, I I, I don't have enough salt in my system. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to be like I. I am one of those people who tries to do their best to to try to to keep everything within context of stuff. And CIG has been doing such a good job of of meeting expectations or not or just not not missing expectations over the last couple of months that it's like something's different. I don't know what it is. 
I don't, but I'm with Stim. Like I am not going to sit here and tell you that 4.0 is going to come out perfectly or it won't come out at the, at, at, at the stroke of midnight, the day before, before uh, the last day of the year or anything like that. Like, like, the one thing that's been a constant throughout this entire project is the second that CIG pushes anything out to the backers, we will destroy whatever they have. And they will, we will find issues that they cannot reproduce at all internally and are just like, how is this happening with your machines but not ours? What is what is the difference? Um, so, But then they figure it out and then they yeah. fix it. Yeah, that's, and it, it's it's not to... And it's usually spaces better. Yeah. It's not to hammer on CIG and, 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 you know, when we say we've been burned before, it's not that CIG has burned us. It's that the technology hasn't worked out as intended or mm. it took longer than intended or, you know, all of these challenges in creating the most complex video game universe and project, uh, you know, that, that's been to date. It really is something that's unique. So, um, yeah, it, this is no shade being thrown anywhere. This is just, I'll see it when I believe it Yeah, for this year. It's definitely coming. I have the full mm-hmm. hopium for that. Just whether or not it's going to come before sitcom or before the, t- the turnover of the year, I'm not 100% sure. And then also maybe the expectations of what that is going to be. So, you know, I can see, Darj, when you, when you said the polish on it before, if we're really getting down to just what those definitions are of each one of those checkboxes to get through, then yeah, you know, it could happen sooner than the end of the year and quite literally much sooner. But is it going to have a lot of that stuff that we're hoping that comes with it? So, you know, like a nice big jump gate ring, you know, around the, around the jump gate mm. and stuff like that. You know, all of those things that need to come with it. That that I am a bit salty about that they're moving away from the rings. That was are, are they the getting word, rid of those? The, yes. The wor- words of oh. Ben Haddock. Uh, no, is it Ben Haddock? Dave Haddock. Dave, Dave Haddock. Haddock is that they're moving away from uh, the rings as a form of stabilizing um, infrastructure. Uh, which that is something I'm salty about because it You're just removes. Fan. From the cinematic aspect of yeah. of it, yeah, I I I understand from a logical point of view because the the problem with the rings is Stanton was discovered in twenty eight fifty, Pyro was discovered in like twenty four fifty, and Pyro was a shithole by the time uh, by the time uh, Stanton sh- showed up. So this would be like so so no one would want to build a ring from Stanton to Pyro unless they were insane or had some other ulterior motive. And it possibly could happen. Okay. So no, no, but this is, this is the specific jump point. Yeah. We're talking about short. Sure. No, but I'm oh. talking maybe in general. Yeah, no, uh, I get it. I get it. And I, yeah. but I also think that the reason why they're moving away from it is because they've completely changed how jump points work. Unless an artificial jump point would require a ring. Possibly. You could, maybe there might be something that could something they could add to lore of because uh, they haven't had they don't have that right now of like a like a very complicated th- situation where like they know how to do a temporary small jump point but it requires this yeah. huge infrastructure and all that kind of stuff so like kind of like a like the space upon, highways of freelancer so depending upon how exploration ends up playing out in the future as well we don't necessarily want to have to have you know jump rings being assembled for for shorter term gameplay. You know, like wormhole space or something like that from elite. You know, from mm. uh, Eve Online. However, that ends up working. So it's nice to have it where it doesn't have to have a ring. But mm. I like the idea of you know a big, permanent, established wormhole. You know, between two mm. stations, having a nice big ring. That's kind of cool. Anyway, I'm a big yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, of Cowboy Bebop and uh, Stargate, and both of those had giant rings for transportation yep. purposes. So, yeah. You know. And they they even have the super gates uh, in the fi- in the later seasons, yeah, yeah, for ship travel, not just for personal travel, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, uh you you spoke his name Darge and he appeared. Um uh who? Elliot? <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes. Um but but like for those who don't know in Bebop, um, they have these gates that that you can travel through that are they're basically like highways to get you from different planets. So like you have you can go through a gate. Yeah, they're they're, they're, they're kind of like quantum travel, but only between different gates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hello. He 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 mentioned you earlier about the uh, the overdrive initiative. So, mm. 
there's, there's a question because I've I, I've been playing it, which is good, but it's not it's not meant for it's it's not designed for uh, a bunch of hooligans of uh, like thirty plus hooligans kicking down the door of a data center and uh, pointing every everyone pointing at least two guns at a at, at a door while you do the mission or. A, a poor little three ship convoy getting am- ambushed by like twenty five dudes and and uh, uh, a Mark II hornets and tor- uh, eclipses and uh, fully kitted out hammerheads and stuff like that. It was uh, kind, we kind of over overwhelmed the system with that. <laughs> it, it, it's it's also not made for people like me who walk into the uh, to the to, to the, uh, the underground outpost with uh, just the. Uh, the classic or the stock um, Kelto uh, white spacesuit and helmet with a single pistol going, hello? <laughs> so. Um, all right. Next question comes from Midnight Black SE, who asks, what question are you left with after the persistent hangar ISC? Um, we still have questions about cargo missions. Uh, that was something missions, I really... Yeah. That was one of the things that we... I was hoping we'd get an update on. We didn't get the update on the cargo missions. So... Um, I'm assuming that if that's still planning on coming through, that we'll get another update, probably with speaking of Elliot, Elliot here. Um, you're probably talking a little bit about it because that is, I know that was Elliot's baby. Um, but, uh, and also parking. Like if you park incorrectly and you try to store your ship, oh. is your, is your ship going to like, you know, into the, into the void. So mm. any questions you have? Uh, Stan? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think I pretty much exhausted them during the show. There's so many questions that way. Uh, for missions, yes, I, you know, the mission team uh, or mission teams have done an amazing job uh, making so many missions lately, and I would just love to see a lot more cargo stuff come along. So, w- w- what and when, you know, yeah. but we don't ask when questions. Yeah. <laughs> Down there, you know, for 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 landing UI, they could adopt the um, the hull C like cargo uh, loading um, box that you need to fly into in a line. So they could just have that shoot up through the, um, through the door of, of, uh, of the hangar. So you know that you are kind of aligned where you're supposed to be. And then you just drop down. Okay. It, until we have the proper landing UI that has been promised for eons at this point. Okay. Um, but you know, Elliot. Elliot says, you know, next month report. He's written a ton of it. That's good. about mission. Yeah, it, the, the, cargo the, stuff. The only the only question I would have is is uh, is is it ready for prime time? Is it, or is it still is, is it still do we still have to let it simmer? Are we going to be seeing an ISC of Elliot explaining why uh, piracy is a good thing? Actually, uh, since one it's going to be on SCL. Oh, yeah, I see and him, Jared yeah. just Jared's gonna be just in the background face palming, and <laughs> uh, th- those are my favorite. SCLs. As 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 Elliot explains why it's it's actually a good thing that uh, that a p- pirate has as has, has uh, disabled your ship and uh, is proceeding to bash your head against the wall to steal your stuff because uh, it's for a mission this time. <laughs> yeah. You know. He's going to immerse your face into the dashboard. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, the the missions there are two or three different variations. There's one of them is um, an illegal version where you're basically piracy. Like there's a there's an item on the ship or there's items in the ship. You're going to intercept, remove the items, and then return those items to their owners or return them. You know, give them to the you know your your, your bosses. There's a legal and legal version of that. And then there's uh, the, the the legal and the illegal versions of like pick up the stuff and move it from point A to point B. So mm. another cargo mission that that I think we talked about years ago on this on this is is like a long running event for delivering raw materials for a certain like big build. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. stations yeah. being built or something like that. I love yeah, I love yeah. those in Elite. I love those missions in mm. Elite. So. So. so you need to either you need to uh, you know deliver all the ore unrefined ore to refineries and refined ore to manufacturing facilities and then materials to you know to the actual destination, but it's going to be like 
millions, oh, okay, maybe millions, but hundreds of thousands of um, SCUs of of stuff that need to be transported all over from yeah. planet to planet to system to system. Uh, but yeah, this is what Quanta is meant to be doing, but players would want to do that too. Why not? It's, it's the Helldivers 2 experience. If anyone has played right. Helldivers 2, where like, like you go do one mission that takes you 40 minutes and it's like 0.001% of liberation <laughs> attached to it. So it requires hundreds of thousands of millions of people to, 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 to do a, uh, to do mission or like, you know, a hundred thousand people doing like five missions every hour to get, uh, <laughs> to, to 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 liberate a planet, because that's always fun. Because the devs devs will be like this. It'll take them weeks to get to build this 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 station, and like two days later, they're like, we have all of the parts there. How did you do this? <laughs> we didn't sleep. You you gave us a challenge and we met it. You know. <laughs> so, I love this sort of this. It's 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 like <laughs> it reminds me of it's like that uh, story from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It it refers to the someone else's problem the story that I alluded to before, um, and it's, it's like one one dude said like 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 in a, in in one year I'm gonna make this mountain disappear completely, and then like one day before that the mountain was still there. He had no idea what it was he was gonna do like what he was gonna do, and then. Um, his friend and their friend and their friend and their friend and their friend who own a major interplanetary moving company just did a solid one night's work and just <laughs> dug up the entire mountain and 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 all of a sudden there was an a weird extra moon in the sky. <laughs> but yeah, that, yeah, that's the sort of work we're talking about, right? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, any, anybody who's seen like those sorts of elites and uh, the event of an elite, or because like there was literally a, a community event, like mission where they were building a new station, and so like everyone had to bring in like they had like a list of materials they needed to get done, and people would be bringing them in, and they buy those materials from you. So you, you know, the goal was to get as any of those materials as possible and truck them over, and there were so many and yeah. such there's such qu common items that you would get like uh, like like a little bit extra cash than you normally would for them, and it would help out mm. a little bit with the, the whole thing so um, and there's synth world that's still being built like, yeah. like need, needing infinite amount of uh, of materials to build yeah. so. science is expensive yeah uh, mm. all right and this has now, been around for a long time like um i can't remember what version of sim city it was but you could build you could collaborate with other people that had cities near yours mm. to build like an agriplex or yeah you know it would be yeah, there was all kinds of things that you can build and work on together. It's like a, it's like a, almost like a story arc, uh, but simplified to really one arc and then done in parallel as opposed to in series. Yeah. So kind of a, kind of a neat way of approaching it. Yeah. I always, I always like those because they, they, they feel very um, epic in scale because it's always very much like, you know, societies getting together to decide to get something done or, or, or the, the impressive stuff like, you know, like a, like a Amish barn raising where, you know, the entire community gets together and raises a barn in 24 hours. And it's like, damn, <laughs> you know, um, all right. Uh, Mr. Gibbs asks what ships still come up from the floor at places. Uh, will ships still come up from the floor places that are not your personal hangers? No. They said that. I want. I. I want. I want. Yeah. I want to say that because those ships you will be um, come from the ASOP terminals. At the the case I'm calling up from the ASOP terminal on in on the outside and still mm -hmm. in the terminal space. And by the time you get down to the hangar that you are assigned, it, the ship will already have been delivered. And even though they they potentially may be an ASOP terminal on a wall there, you won't have access to it just because it's not yours. Yeah. So. Maybe for for from an asset point of view, it may be easier for them to just make every hangar a personal hangar, but just uh, cut off access to the A sub terminal. But the freight elevator should still work mm -hmm. if you want to load and hunt cargo. I think they said they said at ISC that they were just going to do, you know, you'd only call up your ship from the A sub terminals if it wasn't the only you only call up your ship from the A sub terminal in the hangar if it's your hangar. So uh, that may be just a 3.23 sort of thing where like, cause they don't want to like throw a bunch of assets, you know, from that are, that are unique to the personal hangar in, into all the other hangars. Cause it just takes time and, you know, spacing and that kind of thing. 
uh, still don't know what 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 the next stage of delivering a ship that is not at your current location is going to be though so. that's true mm. uh Shipasa asks do we get free cots so we can sleep in the hangars no you have to pay for the cots they, they cost money <laughs> um so no i don't i don't think so i think you're gonna have to go back to habs what do you think sten do you think they're, they're gonna give us free cots to sleep in the hangars nope yeah. <laughs> we have, we have beds in our ships. Over time, you'll have to you'll have to get uh, caught cleaner. You know, it's got to be a credit sink, right? Yeah. Mm. I wouldn't mind a credit sink if they would then let us to just have an adjacent hab, yeah. like we talked about in the main show. Yeah. yeah. But an adjacent hab next to your personal hangar would be a such a nice solution to a lot of problems. Are you listening, Elliot? Can you tell people? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Elliot's not the only CIG employee in here. We've got 330 people on uh, Twitch and, and okay. 107 on YouTube. Are yeah. you listening, CIG employees? <laughs> These things I don't know. I do like that idea, though. It's a nice, a nice little because it shouldn't be too complicated to take that asset. Well, it's like don't too complicated, but it's it's an it's just moving an asset to a place and then kind of working it to make it look good. But you know, um, from a from the point of view of a non game dev. Yeah. But enough of a point of view of having followed this project for over a decade, it doesn't seem it's a simple solution, but maybe not an easy one. You know, yeah. you know, the difference is basic, but 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 yeah, it's it's in theory, it could potentially work very easily. Yeah. Yeah. It's using space that's already not being utilized for anything. So why not? Mm. You know, yeah. Um. Someone's asking, can you just leave your ship in your personal hangar and sleep in your ship bed? I, I don't think so, because I don't think that I don't think it works like that. Because you can't lock your ship, wouldn't dis your ship wouldn't disappear because it's not it's not in an yeah. area where it would be, it'd be stored. But you, so you would just leave your ship in it, it would it would it would remain stored in um, the well. I guess I guess if if it's the separation of a replication layer. It wouldn't yeah, matter because yeah. it's its own instance. It, 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 it's it's moved away from from yeah. from the actual door of of the facility. So even if you you, you don't store it, leave it leave it uh, leave it exposed, and then and then just log out there. The if enough people do it, it'll be a thirty k, and then that'll be a patch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think it could work um, because in theory, because it's a different instance. It doesn't talk with the rest of the landing zones, so it's its own yeah. little ser mini server as it is, or like its own. Ma ma else. Maybe not actually in terms of server meshing, but it's its yeah. own little zone, physically removed from uh, from the landing spaceport, taken yeah. off of the spaceports. So yeah, and, and the elevators. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should, so what, what what happens oh. when you know, like? When you go to your personal hangar, do you get in the hangar elevator and you see like hangar one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then Stim's personal? hangar? No. Uh, when when you have a hangar, um, if you have if you have a personal hangar, you can just go to any hangar, and it, uh, it will it, the hangar you go to should be your hangar. Is basically is basically what I understand because they automatically give you the hangar if you have a personal hangar. It's like when you go to your. Um, so if you go to the elevator that goes yeah. to the hangars, will there just be one button, like lobby and personal hangar? Possibly. I, I don't know if that's if 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 um if if, if that's they have if, if kind of talked about it, but they did say that if you are landing in a place that has your personal is your home location, you only right. will get your personal hangar. So I assume it's the same way. If you wake up the first day you spawn in, you go to you go down to the spaceport. You go to the elevator; it's just going to be the only one that's going to be available to you. But well, I assume you'll have a personal hangar anywhere, because otherwise, then the experience is if you go, like you spawn your personal hangar on Art Corp, you then fly to uh, to New Babbage, um, mm. you know, on Microtech, and then all of a sudden you leave an item there. Then that now means you have a personal hangar because you have an item that needs to be managed. It just doesn't seem; it seems uh, it discontinuous. Won't, but, it won't will, but it won't. But it won't persist if you leave it in the hangar. It'll just disappear in the hangar. So anything right. that's left in the hangar that's not your personal hangar won't be stored. It has to be stored. So your in personal the, hangar will only be the starting location that you choose. I think that's yes. what was said in the yeah. ISC. Yeah. Okay. 
But th that is a good question. I don't know how you're going to access your personal hangar if you already are at the location. There's going to have yeah. to be some separate way. There may be just an option at the very top that says personal hangar, and it's grayed out if you don't have your personal hangar there. And then hangar one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, and that kind of stuff. So, Right, right, right. Um, so. Makes sense. Uh, How are we doing on our questions here? <laughs> uh, we've knocked down, uh, we have 25 left. Okay, perfect. Let's get to it. Um, they're, they're all, a lot of them are pretty simple stuff. Like, okay. um, where, where do you think the, the hangar pass, like Re Revel and York will fit in the con new concept? We've kind of talked about that a little bit when we were talking about live, but I personally think that when they come, when it comes to choosing your personal hanger, you can just choose whichever hanger style you like, and they'll just come up with a, a, a new style for some of those things. I don't think it's going to happen 3.23 or even 1.0, but I think that's the future of it is like, we'll just have, it's like hanger skins almost is what you're getting. Yeah. And yeah. some hangers, some areas will have support that areas and some areas won't. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that with 3.23, there'll either be one type mm -hmm. that we get or, um, or they'll allow us to maybe choose uh, out of the ones that we have from our various hangers. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just going to be one type because uh, the way that they described it was just whatever, wherever you located is going to have a specific mm. hanger. So, so I don't, I don't think you're going to have, cause like they're like the, um, arrow view hanger is the, um, Orison hangers. And then the old industrial hanger was the, uh, is what's in everywhere else. I think Microtech Hedge, maybe has, yeah. uh, well, no, because I think even the um, the like the or it's, no, it's the Revel in York, the Revel, not the Revel in York, um, Selfland, yeah, the yeah. Selfland hanger, the Selfland hanger is basically everything else but Orison and Microtech, uh, and okay. uh, and New Babbage, I think. If I remember correctly, what is, what does uh, Grimhex have? Uh, it has, I think it has modified um, Selfland. It looks very Selfland. Uh, okay. I think it's the same stuff. Mm. So. Uh, but Grimhex probably won't be a, a spawn location, so I think we're okay. Um, yeah. But since since they all have their own worlds, uh, have the, the unique asset for their corporate identity to a degree. But these are all pre-made. <laughs> Hangers and Star Citizen are pre prefabs. So like Revel in York, Arrowview, Selfland, these are prefab hanger builders that they just install in a location. So mm -hmm. they're not like they're not like custom built you know assets. It's like you know, I live in a, I live in what's effectively a McMansion. It's one design of like seven that are in my, in my, uh, my housing area. Um, so my house is going to be the same as anybody else's house. It just matters how I decorate it and kind of customize it and paint it and yeah. such. Um, but it's, it's going to be the same, same idea. You know, it's just copy pasted. Designs. So what's your fish tank like? Uh, my fish tank is, uh, filled with no fish currently because, uh, Cam's fish, uh, disappeared. And I don't mean dead. I don't mean like like it was there one day and then it just didn't. It disappeared. She cleaned the tank. Must have gotten eaten. Yeah. Well, she she, yeah. she she cleaned the tank and looked for it. it. There was no corpse. There's nothing. We do have cats. You got, very, you got very well fed cats. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We don't know how the cats got into them if they did, but like it is just gone. Like she cleaned it thoroughly and it was just like round around too. Because sometimes like I've I've had a fish jump out of a fish tank before. Yeah, well, uh, we haven't because if 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 a fish jumped out, of, if that fish jumped out of the fish tank, it would, would have been eaten by the cats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but it's it, it's like right in our bedroom, so it's like it's everywhere. But yeah, uh, like we would have um, been able to see it pretty. I was asking if it was tropical or marine. Uh, it was a betta fish, which I think live in. Okay. Um, they live in. So it's tropical. Okay. Yeah. Tropical. Post tropical. alpha. Yeah. yeah. Post post alpha. It's post alpha. Um, a post alpha <laughs> fish. So bad. Um, so uh, let's see. Still I'm waiting for the gamma else. version of the beta. <laughs> uh, gib hangers. Exclamation point! Gib hangers. Goldfish. Yeah. Oh fuck! There's a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> the gold those, standard. Those, fish. those are the final fish. The gold gold fish. standard fish. Um, let's see. And catfish is going oh. to be the pet fish. Um, like, yeah, if you've been doing as much dating as I have, the catfish is uh, not not what you not what you think of it is. Uh, oh, yeah. 
Shimpasta says, when will we get hot tub flare to put in our hangers or habs? Uh, they're going to they're gonna make the hot tub and the Phoenix work first. Yeah, they got to do that first. Yeah. We already got the gravy tub in uh, the the hot tub of the uh, F, the Mark II F seven C. Since you could just yeah. chill out in the uh, half half opened uh, cargo deck or cargo hangar. Was was that people chilling out, or was there were they corpses that were that were we've we've trans- positioned? We've transfer- transported people in them, like like people just like hopped into the uh, uh, managed to hop into the uh, the cargo area if you leave it open you can actually like leave it open they'll, they'll travel through quantum you'll they'll, like you'll still Whoa. stick in it Damn. so that, that, that best chip ever then <laughs> it's a secret uh the joke is, is it's a secret hot tub that's that's what it is it comes it comes with its, it's own not, hot tub. It, it, it's, it's a redneck hot tub like you yeah. have rednecks doing hot tubs in the back in the beds yeah, of pickup trucks. yeah yeah um you just you just need a big a big enough tarp and and Sean Tracy has been working on Tarp Tech, you know. All right, I'm gonna go through some of these. Vampires, some of these are okay. stuff we've already answered in the discussion, like like you mm. know, hanger flare and you know, will they sell future with LTI for our hangers, like self sell uh sell furniture? They already do. They probably will again, you know, um sell furniture for 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 hanger flare and LTI with LTI because I don't you're not gonna lose your hanger flare. I don't know if you're gonna get into a firefight in your with your hanger flare around. I don't think they'll be destructible, but oh no, but but sneaking into another person's hangar you if you have it. like hmm? you no no it. no no but having a firefight inside a hangar like like if you have a bounty and they and you can you actually are able to follow someone into their personal hangar that would be interesting. Um, they'll, it, they'll be able to fight back. Yeah. Zone. Shep, the Shep Pasta asks as well, like how how do we control who has access to a personal hangers? We don't know, like because yeah. it's it's just going to be whoever like you can like. There's they haven't explained that yet because didn't they say party based? Or yeah, it might be party assume. based. But like, how would you be able to tell the difference? There's going to have to be a button about somebody's personal hanger, maybe like party yeah. leads uh, personal uh, hanger. Something like that, but 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 there's there's also people that can just step into your hang, into your elevator with you. Yeah. So what no, what no. what do they, do they do? They just disappear from the from the elevator. Is there like a force field that prevents them from exiting? Is there a per, is there a separate hangar where you can access that you can just go to your personal hangar and you know you can only get access to it if whatever. So. Um, it gives me PTSD from living in an apartment and having to go and fetch everybody that came to the party. Yeah, <laughs> down on the ground floor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. uh, if the hangar size, um, is based on ships a player owns the first login, what happens if the user buys a, a bigger ship in game? Will the hangar expand? Everybody has been bringing that up, and I just want to say that was something that was either misspoken mm-hmm. or honestly missed. And considering everybody's brought it up, if you buy, a, if if the only thing you own is a reclaimer on your first login, and then you, uh, sorry, an Aurora on your first login, and then you then you buy a reclaimer and you own it through your, uh, through through in-game purchases, there will be a script that will run through it again and and give you a hanger big enough to spawn the reclaimer. Yeah. The question is, not, is what if you've not already... having access to a, a hangar that that can't that can't fit the biggest ship your own is just a, such a such a huge oversight that is gonna that's gonna be caught before it, it yeah. goes live. The question is, is that what if you've already customized your personal hangar and now you have a larger ship? Oh, yeah. <laughs> does it just reset everything? Is that what it does? Probably, the, the, yeah. Because because the... you're gonna have movers come in. Yeah, or, or or potentially, you know, you are then you are moved to a bigger hangar. So yeah. everything that has to has to come with you, and it's just going to be in a box. Yeah. Or I, all of the ports from the smaller hangars are mapped to the ports of the larger hangars. If we still have the, the port system, spawn, yeah, yeah. If if they do a port system, but if they don't do a port system, it's just going to be a randomly strewn all over the place. But if you sell a larger ship. 
Now you have a right. smaller right. ship. How does that yeah. expand? And you, and you have too much stuff yeah. in the big hangar. And yep. then all that stuff is just going to start, you know, as soon as you open the hangar door, it just goes... <laughs> 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 uh, I think the the honest to god answer is is it'll just reset your your customization. So if you get yeah. a bigger ship, it'll just reset because that's the easiest answer. All, 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 all stuff will go into your inventory. Inventory, then you have, have to re- bring it out again. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one thing I I don't like about this system that you are given the biggest hangar that your ships can handle is. Like everyone, no, maybe not everyone, but I just go with this this hyperbole. Everyone has, you know, caught, pulled up a Pisces or a Mustang or an Aurora and was given the 890J hung hangar at Area 18. And you walk out of the elevator and your ship's way over fucking there. <laughs> it's hilarious. I love it. Spawning yeah. an Aurora in the middle of the 890 hangar. And it's like, it's like you walk in and you're just like, all right, keep running. I'm still running. Yep. And that's uh, so gonna happen. You gotta you run like a football a field <laughs> down, down, down there. Yes, and if you own a ship like that, that's the size hangar that you're gonna get. And if you want to take a small ship out, you better start running. Yeah. So, I just think it's gonna be funny like, that the oh, epic oh, moment. Again. Go ahead. Going, going out of, sorry, I'm just saying it'll feel like PO again. Uh, what, going out of the wrong exit. You know? Yes. <laughs> I say it's gonna be hilarious. hilarious. It's gonna be hilarious when um, when when the video start coming out of that epic like the lights pot turn on and the the voiceover says something to the effect of please stand clear while well, hangar is rising, and you know someone's gonna put some like swelling music in the background and and then it's you're gonna see the pad like the the thing open up and the pad's gonna lift up and as the pad lifts up you realize it's not this gigantic like eight ninety jump it's just an aurora. And the music is going to change. Five pixels tall. Yeah, yeah. The the, the music is going to change at that that moment from the grand swelling theme to the to the kazoo version of that uh, of that the the Jurassic Park the theme. Slide, you know, or the yeah. slide flute version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the 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 Jurassic Park theme to the Jurassic Park theme. You know, but but that's perfect, perfect. Mm. <sighs> uh, but yeah, uh, your TVs are what you need and. And, yeah, uh, but the PTV should be always spawned inside the hangar then because you'll be only able to spawn a PTV if you pull it up through the ship hangar. And if the ship hangar is the size of a <laughs> job, it's <laughs> uh, Bowerick in, in chat says, well, why can't the smaller ship spawn closer to the entrance? <laughs> We're assuming it's at the very end. <laughs> it's going to be in the middle because they all spawned directly in the middle of the pad so that they can be perfectly. And I think Dar- we lost Darge somehow. The, the yep. power finally. I'm still out. hearing voice, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can still hear you in voice. Let me, let me read. The thunder and the lightning. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just Video Ninja. That's There we go. Yeah. Because your, your voice like glitched out there for a moment. So. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I fell in the hole. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> There's a lot it. of questions here about things like more than one personal hangar, um, two hangar lifts. So like you know have that two different vehicles that like come up or two different uh, like like um, cargo things. Um, do do you think that in general we're going to see uh, see varieties like multiple multiple lifts per hangar or multiple cargo uh, uh, freight freight elevators per hangar or uh, multiple hangar personal hangers owned i think i think all of the answer the answer to all of these is probably yes at some point maybe not but the multiple not lifts, but... not in the yeah. okay multiple lifts in a huge hangar potentially just because yeah. it then it'll be easier to it'll solve that problem where, wherever it, yeah it'll solve the problem of, of instead of having a gigantic pad lift up when you have a big hangar you just have the small pad lifts up right by the front so you can just easily get access to it, but then it's like multiple yeah. lifts instead. So. But 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 may, maybe not in the assigned hangars at major landing zones on an own hangar. Yeah, yeah, on a potentially. Mm. Yeah. But but these 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 hangars that we're getting now that are in Area 18 and New Babbage and Orison and Lorville. Um, these, I believe, will just be okay. You are just given one of those big hangers or medium hangers, whatever, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, whatever fits your ship, and there will be no hangar room customization, and that sort of thing will be 
wait on wine. You know, I, I actually, I agree. I, I, I do think that we're going to have all the hangers be personal hangers at some, or like the same model as the personal hangers at some point. Now we lost Tim. Um, this video is having some problems, I think. Mm. Is Tim still here in audio? I don't know if Tim is. No. No. Tim's not here in audio. Just no, no Tim fell in the hangar hole. <laughs> yeah, Lefty. Yeah. Uh, do this. Change the region oh. real quick. Hello? There he goes. He no. just dropped out of the Discord call. Yeah, we'll see. see power may, may come back on here in a moment. Um, oh, power quit? I don't know. Uh, like I, that's that that sort of thing is he like internet went down or his power went out. Um, mm. all right. So I'm going to save that. I want to see if Sim comes back, but, um, yeah. I, and I, I think we're almost certainly going to get more than one personal hanger at some point. Um, but I do, but I do think that all of them will be personal hanger models because the, uh, because I, I hundred percent believe that ASOP terminals are going the way of the Dodo. Uh, like we'll, we'll have ASOP terminals for our ships rather than being something. Cause that's a little bit more personal. And CIG is all about that kind of like personalization. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have a big line of people waiting to like call their ships and their hangars on because like, that whole area should just be like a reception. You know, I, th I think they're, they're, we're going to see a, a rework of how um, star uh, ports and, and space ports work for uh, okay. for the game. I kind of even want to say that that uh, the area where the ASAP terminal is, is going to be, that will be uh, filled with terminals for transport yeah it's like if you want to request or basically just if you want to request like transport to a different location that's where you do it via terminal like that yeah um or you look up where you know if if a big transport is already going there there's any empty seats genesis um okay so many all right so i'll just answer this this one because this is the question. How are they going to deal with like quantanium, uh, ref unrefined, uh, and un like, 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 like raw ore and uh, like those, those temperamental ores? How are they going to deal with that? Uh, and I think the answer is uh, they'll have some sort of device. Not in 3.23. I don't think any of this is going to matter in 3.23. Because I don't think any of the raw ores can be stored in 3.23. Because the saddles won't work, I don't think. Um, yeah. If you store your ship, you're like if you store your Seems ship, back. there it is. If you store your ship and it goes down, that'll be basically the same as right now, heading into the terminal area and hitting store on your A sub terminal, and that also already stabilizes your quantanium, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it already stores that sort of thing. So, like, I think, I think, um. I think there's not going to be a way for you to remove this stuff and, and store it. I think what you're going to do is have to land the ship, store the ship, and then it'll store it into the into the uh, um, mm. into the zone. Because I don't think we have removable saddlebags yet, and that kind of stuff. So, um, so I don't think it's going to change that With, much initially. If you go, if you go salvage a, a prospector, and they still have saddlebags, you can you can remove them. Uh, I believe can you? I, be, I believe I believe you can do so. You can you can remove saddlebags just like you can remove oh. uh, weapons and, and 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 components. Yeah. So I don't know. You can I don't even, know how you, they... can, you can even buy them. Yeah. I knew you could do that with some of things like the 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 big the big tanks from the uh, Starfarer, but I didn't know you, if you can. Uh, so yeah, that, that, well, today I go. learned. Uh, so I, uh, I don't I don't know, but I do think that if you're gonna have to store your your raw ore, you just take it off and put it into the uh, the cargo elevator and, and load and store yeah. it. So yeah, and potentially that the built-in inner system of the station is gonna have some sort of stabilization module or system for quantanium. So as soon as its elevator disappears out of view, um, the timer stops. <clears throat> Uh, all right. Um, do, 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 do. Stim uh, answers the next one because he missed out. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is a question. This this one is actually for Stim. I wanted to wait for Stim to come back. Northern Trooper asks, can Stim talk about the giraffe background? 
Is there a story <laughs> about it? They've been, there's been a discussion in the, in the chat about, the, about you uh, kidnapping a giraffe in the background there. So. <laughs> That's right. Uh, his name is Frank. Uh, he comes from Africa. No, um, my, my, I, I was born in South Africa originally. And so um, my living room is all kind of African themed. I've got a giraffe there. I've got some elephants kind of in this room as well. You can see the pillows. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the pillows have African themes, whether they're cats or elephants or hippopotamus or what have you. Um, and then I've got kind of like a, a tooth thing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then over that way, I've also got a, um, rah, 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 there we go. Um, that's some wood that was, I, I got these locally from, from the beach and I've taken them and mounted them on steel bases and they're just the best cat scratchers everywhere, uh, yeah. ever for, for a cat. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the theme in there. So lots of African stuff. So that, uh, you that know, awesome. it's, it's a lovely piece of wood, that giraffe, and I need to, um, uh, oil it from time to time and make sure it doesn't crack and, and keep it nice and nice the way it is. So yeah, thanks for asking. Nice. Um, yeah, I can't really answer that one. Uh, should extra small ships, like Pisces and Snubs, also be converted to items so they can be brought up from the freight elevators? I think so. Can you say it again? So one of the reasons why we're not getting sh uh, vehicles with, with the uh, freight elevators and the first version of freight elevators is because vehicles are not items classified, classified as items. So mm -hmm. they can't be added to it. So they have to kind of work the back end to make them work like that. And um, that's what they have this kind of work around. One of the, the question is basically, can they do the same thing to snub ships like the, the Pisces or okay. the so that you can spawn them in freight elevators and then load them onto your ship? Uh, Good question. I don't know. Technically, um, that's going to wreak havoc with flying out of the freight elevator you would probably want to do either a couple of those big um tractor beam guns and get them out before you got into them to fly them wherever you want to do it so i kind of want to say that considering the space restrictions of the freight elevator it would still behoove them to just do them via the elevator just because it's a lot easier to take off from just a huge landing pad um, other than a very cramped elevator. My guess is that the dependencies, it, it, it's not like simply, you know, joining up the databases. <laughs> I, I think that there's probably a lot more dependencies based upon the type of, of uh, item it is, the type of entity it is. So are we looking at, um, you know, taking vehicles and separating them out from technically being ships you know so different database structures different whatever else is involved in it so that they can come out of the the uh the freight elevator and if that's the case they would they have to do that again for snubs would they bother doing it is there another purpose for doing that you know uh really kind of attack the low-hanging fruit i do like the idea of being able to you know get a get a snub out and then load it into the back of a Connie or, or whatever you're doing. But um, I don't know if the, the justification is there. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it kind of feels like snubs would behoove them to, in the a subterminal rework to, to have like, Just load them in like a, a, a drop, a, like a drop down menu to select whether you want the, um, the Merlin to spawn with your Connie or your Pisces to spawn with your Carrick just because they will have the dedicated slot for that in the, in the, either in the hangar or, or hanging off the tail. Mm. So, yeah. Until then, probably it'll be. Shut up, phone. It's my mom. Hold on. Oh, okay. I'll be right back. Keep talking. I'm going to mute myself right real quick. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to I want to figure out is like if you if you uh, if you want to fit out a Carrick, uh, I I can see there being enough room for a ground vehicle to fit into that fits into the garage. So you bring that up, 
you drive it off and you park it somewhere on the side and then you bring up the Carrick. But what about, like, say, the Pisces? Do you think there will be enough room for you to take that the Pisces and park it, yeah. park it next to it? Or would you need to have a friend get in the Pisces, take off and hover above while you drop the elevator and bring up the Carrick and then the, 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 the per person waits until you open the hangar and you drop it in. That sort of logistics is going to be fun in the very first version. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. And I, I wonder as we get further out while, while Paul's away, you know, um, when it comes to even fueling, so refueling in your hangar, Will we be able to refuel in the hangar or will we have to go to a destination? If we are, you know, how Sorry does about that... that? My, uh, it was, it, it was a, uh, so my mom was calling because she heard the news that South Austin had a very terrible accident involving some preschoolers. So oh. she was just like, just wanted to let me know. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, I think she was worried that like, like, it was like, just, it's like anybody you might know. I'm like, I don't think so, but I, I didn't hear about that. So. Uh, nice of her to check in. Yeah. Mm. Um. All right. Let's 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 kind of get through. Where, where, some we, where were where were we? No. So we were in the middle of something. Uh, okay. Where, where were we in the middle of? Uh, it, it was. I guess the question was. You know. Right now you. Oh yeah. Uh, ref refueling and rearming. Yeah. I think eventually so, we'll have to manually do it. I think. For rearming, sure. Like physicalized ammo, right? We're already yeah. looking at doing that with you know loading individual rounds and what have you. So eventually you'll have to take that ammo and put it in your ship somehow. Yeah. Uh, but for the refueling side, do we think that that refueling mechanic, and I know it's not really part of, you know, what we're talking about, but it is tangential. And that is, but there are always hoses near the elevator door for fuel. There is. And they have the rope mechanics for squadron 42 specifically for that. And every ship has a, has a, refueling port for Starfarer and an auxiliary refueling port like the uh, the one that's in the back of the Gladius. So like And I there's probably think... liquid physics designed in the engine. You see how rumors start, folks? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean it was it was it was very much like like implied. I think a lot of people thought that we were going to see uh, like the hose, like the rope tech was going to be used for like hoses for refueling for squadron and CIG is and, and a, we we, we... We've seen that in the demo. Like yeah. you have one that is very unsafely being pulled right pulled. in front of your walking path. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. in the Squadron Forty Two demo yeah. for the picture. Yeah, and and yeah, and every ship has a has a refueling port. So mo both one for Starfarer purposes and one for like like it's the one that's the you see yeah. in the kind of the back of the Gladius. So yeah, no, I I CAG I don't think it's going to be because I the the way we have it now there's no way they're keeping that. There's there definitely is going to be a game mechanic involved in it, and if it it might be somebody turns on the pump and the other person is is um uh, is like connecting it and somebody's monitoring the flow so that they can know that they don't over over hit it hit hit it like the way we do with the Starfires now, uh, and if that's if you don't want to do that you just send it down and then the magic the NPC people will do it for you you know kind of thing, yeah so. But we won't see that until every ship has a ground accessible refueling port, yeah. and not all of them do yet. And and there's so many ships that that are very low on the list for our gold standard pass. So it's gonna be a while. There might there might be like a trolley that's one of those ladders. <laughs> you push her up there so you can like like climb on top. Yeah. Um. Gosh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I, I do think that the, they'll have a point where it's just some ships will be able to be manually refueled and others will just have to, you know, descend into the the abyss to be able to get refueled and there'll be a timer. There's going to be some sort of... Yeah, yeah. let's refuel it, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, MPCDN asks, will 3.23 come with the ability to store mining bags when full? Well, I didn't think we could remove this the, the saddlebags, but you can. So yeah, I wouldn't mm -hmm. see why you wouldn't be able to remove this mining bags and then attach them to a cargo bit grid and let them let them store. I don't yeah, see any because you you yeah you can already put um, cargo containers in your inventory, so that's just going to be a different implementation of being a accessing your inventory. And saddlebags are just a, another container. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, all the building blocks are seemingly already in place for that. Yeah. We don't have a confirmation of any of that, though. Like, like CIG hasn't said yeah, that. That's, so. that's, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. all the building blocks are seemingly in place, but we have no official confirmation. Yeah. Uh... Uh, you bring up Memwalkers bringing up old memories. Uh, Vulcan has drones to do refueling. Maybe drones are in the hangars as well. I remember when drones used to repair and refuel you. That was uh, good times. Yep, and I remember they 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 look like exactly like the camera drone in the uh, Bishop Speech video. Oh, uh, just just spitting randomly and really really fast. Just just spitting <laughs> thing. Yeah. Uh... Um. All right, so Dellinger asks, uh, we're getting personal hangers and eventually Habs. We're also getting base building eventually. How do you think and or want CIG to balance between the two systems so that one isn't considered better than the other? By the way, we have six questions left. We just demolished those questions. So, like I thought, there's like, like I would say 10 to 12 of them were just repeated questions of the same question. So, mm-hmm. mostly... Can you store uh, uh, mining equipment? Uh, will we have multiple personal hangers and uh, questions about like like raising and lowering, you know, some of the stuff? So, yeah. Um, I, I the way I personally think personal hangers and habs versus base building is that uh, base buildings would be more convenient, but more time and labor intensive. You have more control over a lot of those the the, the details. Whereas you don't have a control over what hab you get. I mean, you can buy a hab, but you're gonna have to like where they're available rather than being <coughs> like like the same one. Um, um, and more expensive because they'll be in hard demand and less uh, less. There'll be less things that you'll be able to do with the base building. You'll be able to add your own food production and mm-hmm. mining and manufacturing with a with a hab in a city. You are just living there and if that's the sort of gameplay you want to do just have a location that you have where you have access to your ship so you can just fly out and do stuff sure but you know there are as as many as many different approaches to playing star citizen as there are people playing it but i also hope that with the with the base building you know from, from the hab perspective specifically that we'll get a little bit more granularity than you would with you know just building like a habitation module you know hopefully it, it's you know you can do corridors and and you know different modules that can attach together um so that you can design your own um mm-hmm. living space now whether whether it's um corridors and there's there's like like a a bedroom module and like a living room module and like a kitchen module or, you know, however it's designed, hopefully we get something that's maybe a little bit more. Um, what was that? So we, we were at Sim city before now we're at the Sims, right? <laughs> I right, mean, right, right. this is, this is Chris Roberts's everything game. Of course we're going to get Sims and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think, I think we kind of covered it. we got five more questions to go. Uh, next question comes from um, MCT, uh, MCD Tom, I guess T O M M M M, who asks, Will we be able to name our own cargo boxes? I don't think in 3.23, but that is definitely something I want us yeah. to be able to. Further down the line, 100%. I'd love it. To be able to, if like, nothing else, I want to take the cutting tool and engrave the name in yeah. the lid of the cargo box. I, Right. At least, at least being able to like, like either take a look at it and see know what it is, or like access the inventory and go, oh, this is like when you access inventory, you know how it says like at the very top uh, for like loot boxes, it'll say like, like clothing or medical or something like that. You just say like, mm. you know, whatever you kind of customize that title is. So you can just look at it and go, you open it up and immediately go, oh, it's not this one. Oh, it's not this one. Oh, it's if this anyone's one. Yeah. If anyone's played Valheim to any decent degree, or Minecraft, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You know, you create signs above your boxes, uh, you know, especially especially for like a player base um, in, in your own um, hangar. It's yeah, this is, there's still value to it. hundred percent. It's funny. I was thinking about, you know, kind of a messed up confluence of, of thoughts. But we were talking earlier about 3D printing and, you know. I was thinking, well, maybe, you know, for all of your coolers versus your shield generators yeah. versus that, you 3D print like these racks, you know, that you put the, your modules or store them in, in your hangar and stuff. So it's the same yeah. kind of idea. You'd want to be able to label them and organize in some way. 
uh, inventory management is critical with a game like Star Citizen, even in, unless they have it an automatic system, which they seem to have somewhat automatic. But I imagine if you have a like a ship that has a ton of different materials, like say you put all of your guns into one con- storage container mm-hmm. and you store that storage container. I want to be able to tell the difference between that storage container with all my guns and that storage container with all my uh, Picos. You know, like there's there's got to be some... This may not uh, mean much to a lot of people, but there is a mod pack for Minecraft called Feed the Beast. And it's basically just a lot of technology packs. And a lot of that, a lot of what you do in that is inventory management with pipes and conveyor belts yeah. and sorters and hoppers and automatic signage. So we're not going to get any sort of that thing going on in Star Citizen, but I, in a, if you have your own big outpost, I wouldn't be opposed to having just a room that is for your stuff and then you have an item bank where you can just recall stuff and it pops out for you so you don't have to have 1724 crates with different stuff you know yeah we're very close to wanting to have a conversation about modding yeah (laughs) i think i think cig can handle some of those problems but like as always, CIG solutions are going to be complicated and timely, uh, time time consuming. Whereas players can figure out a si- cheap, simple solution that wouldn't take as long. So, and I mean, MMOs routinely, like notoriously, have mods that are only for like UI upgrades. So having something that would be w- would automatically change, you know, a, a a a box that you only you can see with the right color scheme, so you know what kind of ship you know like mm-hmm. like uh like what it is would be great and that would be something as simple as i think some cid focus doing something ball. as simple focus. as what, what do you mean your camera oh was it <laughs> was it not focusing uh <laughs> cid could do something as simple as as giving us a way to color our boxes a different color so we could be able to, to tell the differences between them that, that would be a simple solution but having like a like a, a name that we could slap on the side that's like guns booze food whatever so there there is an old asset for a um one eighth scu um box storage box that has a keypad on it so you need to enter a code for it to be open and you know that could easily just be a name field input yeah so you you could just look at that uh and edit it and you so you look at the 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 lid of the box and whatever you know you you just read whatever it says what do you put in it there's Um, precedent for it it doesn't work in the current system because it was a bespoke thing in flash but hmm. you know um uh, someone was like surely surely a label system would be easier than color coordinating you'd think but look at the naming system for ships it's currently broken and doesn't work on the any of um on all the ships because of the different colors yep. in the background so yep. it's, it's not just about 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 like labeling it's about does the label is a label legible on the background of all cargo containers and can you develop a system that will dynamically change the font or the color or the uh of of, of the uh, of the of the text so that he can be seen from far away. There's a lot of problems that can implement. A lot of problems, that. yeah. Mm. Uh, and it, it's just more about, it's it's not really that it's difficult. It's something like that could probably be workshopped and finished pretty quickly even with the kind of people that CIG have. But it's a matter of, do you yes. want to pull five people off of uh, the team working on distribution centers to do something like that? Is it worth their their like their three weeks of time to do the, to do this this problem? Or do you just get the damn depth distribution centers done? <laughs> it's one of those things. So, mm. list yeah. of priorities as long as my yeah, as mm. as his hair, as as yes, as my hair. That's what I said. Yes, I didn't say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So we've got four more questions left, and I think all of these are pretty good. I'll do the simplest one for right now, which is Impasta, who asks. How will the new hangars work on space stations where it's obvious that the hangar is in a landing a landing zone only? Or is it where, where it's obvious that the hangar is the landing zone only? What? I don't think you'll be able to get a per- 
personal hangar in no. in a in a space station is just landing zones yeah i mean unless they let us set a home base on a station but nothing points in that direction i yeah. was thinking about it earlier though as to whether or not that's going to be coming you know and whether or not the space or the room is you know <clears throat> realistically there on the space stations um for all they're of them. huge though <clears throat> I don't know if they are. And so maybe like, I, I think like, I'd like to be able to spawn in a space station. I'd love to be able to have a space station be my starting space because some, you know, some ships like, um, you know, will not be things that you can take off from a planet that can't land, you know? So eventually they'll have to have that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like where are you going to, where are you going to spawn your javelin? Right. Or or is the javelin your spawn location? You know, at that point, you're basically treating it as a floating space station. Yeah, with... and if, if they don't despawn, because you know those capitals, right? So mm. yeah, you'll have to quantum into a middle of nowhere space, and so you know you'll never nowhere nobody will be able to find you when you're logged out. Yeah. Uh, okay. All challenging uh, challenges that need to be solved at some yeah. point. Yeah. What was that? Not not my problem. We yeah. <laughs> there's, a, uh, I think at least for three dot twenty three, there's obviously the answer is no. It's, you're not going to be able to store no. stuff. And I think, uh, and I do think that's one of the reasons why the three dot twenty three hangers we might still have the old hangers rather than everything be the personal hangers because that way. Um, the hangers for the for the, the space stations will be the same. I think that's one of the reasons why the ASOP terminals exist the way they do. But um, I think in the future they could do that. Um, all right, we've got three more questions. Um, Midnight Black SC asks, "What do you all think of the animals they've been showing off lately? Do you think we'll ever be able to tame those dogs and use them to guard our bases?" Uh, th that. You said taming animals, and my only my brain just was like was like yeah in twenty twenty seven, uh, yeah. you know like like maybe at some point if if the moon is rising and and uh, you know Jupiter is is in Aquarius uh, you know and the blood moon is and the doth crow five five times with the crow and it, it's it's such a maybe at some point, but I don't think it's a priority. I mean, they, they, I, I think the, the whole pets thing, which yeah. will be a further out goal to begin with, uh, those will probably be things that um, we're not talking about taming and riding, you know, wild creatures. No. We're talking about having something that curls up on your, on your freelancer dash, you know, yeah. uh, while you're flying from place to place more so. Yeah. M more of, decoration than actual loyal companion i i i 100 believe that people will pull a kenshi which uh uh for for those who don't know uh kenshi is a fantastic sandbox game but uh one of the tactics in kenshi that you can do to kind of absolutely just screw up uh a gameplay session or just like to, to, to like kind of get around some problems is you can knock out animals pick them up and throw them into a building or throw them into a, a, a base where they're not supposed to be. So when they wake up, they just start going crazy and trying to kill everyone. So you don't technically murder anybody because the game doesn't say you murdered them. The animals did. You just put the animals in a location. So if you could and knock one, out and animals. One of the, yeah. And one of the, one of the animals that they've been teasing is look, looks like a very ferocious crutch dog. Yes. So taking taking said said friend shaped crotch dog and and uh, somehow trapping it and then releasing it onto a station to cause havoc is uh, you know <laughs> that's that is uh, is going to happen. Uh, it, it, that scenario is just one of many that you know. I know that a developer at CIG just just wakes up screaming about <laughs> in the middle of the night just because uh, yeah they know they're going to have to solve that problem eventually. I, I I also think that that kind of situation is is also something where a developer kind of goes. I wonder how they're going to do that, 
and then just waits that, to see uh, the chaos. That, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, sounds, that it's like the perfect dungeon master. That sounds yeah. fun, though. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds great. That's that's a, that's a great solution to a problem. I don't want to be caught murdering the uh, because I don't want to get a, a crime stat. Uh, but I do want to complete the mission. And all they care about is that these Hurston Dynamics guards are dead. So if I knock out half yeah, of these crotch dogs them. and then get down to the bunker and then just release them into the wild uh, uh, without them killing me, they'll just kill all of them. And I won't be responsible because they don't know I did it. <laughs> oh, so. God. Uh, all right, last two questions. Um, M. Walker asks, do you think they will add a trade and development terminal to freight elevators and spaceports, or will you have to still travel to the TDD offices to buy and sell? Oh, that's yes. a good question, and I hope they do. They almost certainly will require you to go to the trade and development uh, centers <laughs> to sell. And, and it's like, CIG has, has these landing zones for a reason, and they want you to use them. But, Stim, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to think about that one a, a lot more. Um, I, I think you'll have to go to the, the TDD to begin with, 100%. Um, whether they'll speed things up to be able to do it. Um, it. It's a possibility. I mean, technically they could do it. And then there's the loading and the unloading that would go. Um, I don't know. I guess... If, if we're looking at realism, how does it get from your freight elevator to like the trading center? Yeah, no, I think you'll have to go to the TDD because it's not like they'll have the the plumbing to go there. And, and I, I know I'm thinking about it physically rather than gameplay uh, uh, focus, but I think, yeah, Paul, I think you had it right. I think you'll have to go to the TDD. Yeah. Not every shortcut should be taken in terms of optimal gameplay, I believe. Yeah. So we already have the the trade the freight elevators that are, will actually deliver the purchased um, freight for us, but actually finding it and owning it, it, it would actually, yeah, it intense incentivizes you actually going out and checking out the um the environment and potentially there's more sellers that will be able to provide you with the same loot and you have to find out which one's the best for you if you just had a terminal at um yeah. in, in your hangar and you just land in your hangar go to the terminal boop 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 get the cargo put it in the ship and leave i yeah. can understand why that they would consider that to be a boring prospect Mm -hmm. On top of that, I'm going to make it even worse because CIG has said in the past that they want to have a lot of missions be locked at certain locations like mission boards or the TDD where you can go to the TDD and pick up your cargo missions and then go take it from there. So, like, that's going to be a thing too. And I know a lot of people are like, well, that's tedious and boring. It's like, yeah, but... Like there's also going there's still I don't think they're gonna get rid of the 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 Moby Glass missions, like picking up missions from Moby Glass, but I do think that the 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 most wealth or the most uh, profitable missions, the ones that are gonna give you the most benefit are gonna be something you're gonna have to go in. Like the old the old mission giver missions, we had to actually show up and talk with them before they gave you the mission. That's gonna come yeah. back. And those will will be like give you reputation, they'll give you which will give you unlocked um items and probably higher payouts. And I, I, I think there, there's a place for those sorts of cinematic experiences and or forcing you to go to a place you're not used to and interact with things and kind of that sort of idea. So how, how unfair is it to rephrase that question to say, um, if, if you want that, that ease of gameplay, then go play Eve Online. Well, is, that, is, is that easy in Eve Online? Is that how easy it is? Or you sit uh, in your or, or, or Elite Dangerous, actually. Mission. Elite Dangerous. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, Elite Dangerous. You, you just, you know, you accept the mission and then it takes you and then you fly to the place because you can't get out of yeah. your ship, right? Yeah, yeah. Every, you everything you do from the cockpit. Yeah. yeah. On a station, everything basically you do from, from the cockpit, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think it's unfair, but I think I think Star Citizens at its core, Star Citizens not trying to go for optimal gameplay experience. Uh, since I started playing Helldivers 2, one of the, the 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 core philosophy 
of the devs who made it, the Arrowhead Studios. They're about a, about a hundred person game dev teams. So they're actually pretty big. But they're, they're, what is at the corner of their philosophy? It's literally their motto is uh, a game for everyone is a game for no one. Mm. And the, that, that's what they mean is that they're going to make a game for an audience, specific audience, for a specific crew. And they're not going to try to cast a wide, wide enough net for everyone because that's going to homogenize and make it boring. And I agree yeah. with it. I think at, and, at its and also, core. Yeah. SC does not start for a speedrun citizen. No. At, at its core, Star Citizen is an immersive cinematic life sim. Or, uh, or, or no, what is it? An immersive sim. It's an immersive sim, cinematic immersive sim. The the it's a Deus Ex clone in the in the twenty first century. You know, um, and and I using these old terminologies don't make any sense to everybody because a sim means something completely different now than it did in nineteen what ninety eight when when Deus Ex came yeah. out ninety nine. Um, but people forget that like that's what it used to mean. It meant like you're you you've got a expansive thing you can do. You can skip missions. You have a lot of player freedom, but it's mostly about trying to make you feel like you're there and making those decisions. And, you know, if you want to make money and you have a big shot, you know, person who's going to pay you a lot of money to do something, does it, is it realistic that they'll just call you on your on the phone without ever meeting you or talking with you? Especially when these sorts of people, even today, move and shake in ways that like all personal and very in your face. And no, and it, that, and that it also feels like a movie. Like you know, oh, the mob boss wants to talk to you to give you a mission, but they want to see you and they want to shake you out in, in person. They're gonna make you do those mm. sorts of things. And and those sorts of things, I think, in general, are going to be better. The games can be better for it, as much as it's annoying, because. As we go forward, things are going to get tightened up. Travel times are going to get lower for like going from place to place um, in um, inside cities. Uh, bugs won't be as, as much of a problem. Won't be like falling through everywhere. So as that happens, they're going to decrease some of the biggest pain in the asses, which is just really not design focus, but just bug and like tweak issues. And then they're going to add more time, so you're going to end up still spending more time doing stuff, but it's going to be focused on gameplay. And we can see that with the the, the, the elevators, uh, cargo elevators, and hangars. Like a lot of what they're doing is adding more time, but are they really changing the inventory system at its core? No. You can still basically access your inventory anywhere you want. It's just you now you have to step five feet instead of hitting I. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so. Yep. Um. All right, the last question is from Midnight Black SC, who asks, they talked about reputation in the roundup this week, and I was wondering what will it mean if when, when you don't know who your friends... Okay, what, what will it mean when you don't know who your friends with, with the person you're about to kill? How will you risk making enemies and NPCs and factions affect PvP in the universe? So I think what Midnight Black's asking about is if you shoot somebody who has got high favorability with a faction or like you shoot uh, an NPC, for instance, with a, with a, with, who's a member of a faction, you will get negative reputation with that faction, mm-hmm. um, which will have consequences. Like if you're just going around doing bounty missions, killing nine tails and um, uh, people, when you show up at in 3.23, the plan is you show up at Grimhex, they will shoot at you. You can't land at Grimhex. They'll just, and if you land at Grimhex, they'll just continue to shoot at you because you are a kill on sight and persona non grata. Um, so the question I wanna, is, I want to say, I want to say that if you blindly accept a kill on sight mission for just anyone without researching who they're involved with, provided the systems. Uh, exist in game for you to find that out then it's on you but if the, the systems don't exist yet and you just uh, draw the luck then there's something wrong with the game system yeah i i personally think that if you extrapolate this out to a pvp universe the answer is this is a solution to um what what is what is the term i know it's kill on site but there's a there's a term someone used which i really liked um where like if you don't know the person, it's safer just to shoot them because the the 
the likelihood of you having a negative outcome by not taking action is worse. Like the, it's like the, the, the prisoner's dilemma or something like that is it, it was, it was, a, it was an intellectual term that I was like, the user was like, Oh, that's really neat of talking about kill on site problems. It, it effectively disincentivizes just shooting rather than talking. Um, the dark forest. Thank you, Mike. I guess. Yeah, it's the dark forest solution where it's better to be quiet and because if you if you speak up, you're going to get slapped. And, you know, it's, it's better to be because uh, if if you you know every if, since everyone is you don't know who's hostile and who isn't. Everyone is hostile because uh, mm. everyone is a threat. Uh, the dark forest is a, a great science fiction book. Uh, basically, that posits that the solution to the Fermi paradox is that it's not that nobody's out there. It's that we live in a dark forest where. Every time someone gets loud, a bigger, badder creature, like like in a forest, uh, the bigger, badder creature them. eats them because they because mm. they're a threat. They could be a, they could possibly be a threat. So don't be don't be Ooh. loud. Okay. Survival is don't be loud, which is why everyone's quiet. You know, that reminds it's not, me of three, three body problem. Yeah, Very interesting show on right now. Yeah. Um, I think that. the three body problem. Oh God, I think there's, there's, there's Halo I and there's Avatar and there's, there's so much well, to watch. Well, well, the three body problem I think was written by the same author because it was oh. actually a book. I think it was the book, and the, he wrote the book, The Dark Forest. I think it's the same. It's just Chinese Apparently author, the first book in the series. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, right, yeah, it was right. The three body problem. Yeah, that's, it's, yeah, that's. He's a he's a very cynical sci fi writer, but he's probably one of the most. Um, well, I, I hear his name comes up all the time in sci-fi discussions, and even like um, the um, like like science fiction, like science people, like like bring up to it. So uh, there are two books in the trilogy. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, to, 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 to the solution to the dark forest problem in Star Citizen is have the option if if it's if it's more expensive to shoot somebody than to not shoot them then they won't shoot which i which i want to say is the way to go yeah. it's like like yeah like destructive behavior should have much more impactful consequences than like the subtle approach but that's going to be a massive hurdle for balancing and gameplay Yeah, and there's there's also it's not, it's also one solution, one pro, one solution to the problem that requires multiple solutions, um, hmm. like uh, but but yeah, I I do think I, I do think it's a good balancing feature if people just start shooting because they want to or shooting because they have they they would like to they're gonna find out pretty quickly they're not welcome in a lot of places because they're just shooting people. <laughs> um, hmm. It's it's like there's a you know there's a term in in, in like crimin, criminals use today uh, or used to use it's it's kind of gotten overplayed now but like you know if 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 you're making a lot of noise you're 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 making an area or making a kind of a profession too hot because you're getting a lot of attention from from like uh, from local authorities other criminals are not going to like you because it's like you're walking into their territory and taking a giant shit in their, their backyard and they're like, what the fuck? Like, like, why are you going into an area we're operating in and like shooting up a place? Because now it's every, all the cops are going to pay attention to what's going on. And we've been doing the same thing that you've been doing, but not shooting people and making money. But now you come in and shoot up to try to make money and it's causing all sorts of problems for us. And that's the same thing that's going to happen in star citizen. Even criminals don't want to deal with you if you're a psychopath. <laughs> Mm -hmm. because because you're unstable and if you're unstable they don't they don't know what you're going to do you'll shoot them and because you probably will if you're the kind of player who just like head <laughs> death which is fine i get that mm -hmm. the playthrough it's a fun and hilarious gameplay method that i watch plenty of youtube videos about people doing those sorts of, sorts of gameplays and various different games it's an interesting way of doing it it's just it just needs permanent ramifications. Fuck around and find out. Like you know, th there's yeah. going to be situations. If if you're a oh. psychopath, everyone's uh, to everyone. Everyone's going to know you're a psychopath, and no one wants to fuck with you, or I, even I, deal with you. <laughs> that, so. That's gonna that's that's gonna be that's gonna be the Jesus patch now. The Fafo patch is gonna be the Jesus patch. <laughs> the fuck around, find out patch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Once we have per reputation for 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 everything we do. The social, oh, the social credit of Star Citizen. That's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
That's a deep. Sorry, we're we talking about gaming or, or dating. Uh, is this? There's no difference. Uh, this is. We're talking about life right here. Fuck around and find out. Is yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, I, I think we kind of can yeah, tackled the, the 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 last question though, because um, nice. nice. I, I don't know if I don't know if that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you to Sim and thank you to Dar Darianator for coming down and talking. Check out JRDF.sc. Store's Stor coming up soon, and when it's Wednesdays, right? Is when um, Yacht Club Wednesday nights. Yeah, Wednesday nights. There's got yeah. Yacht Club BC. Yeah. Uh, this is coming right. soon. Yeah, Pacific these days, nine p.m. Eastern. Nine p.m. Eastern. Yes. This I don't know when. <laughs> soon uh, and of course if you enjoyed this please hit that follow button on Twitch subscribe to us on YouTube hit that um, like the button hit that like button and hit the, the bell again to be, be released as always I want to hear your thoughts down below especially with these earlier times if you like these t earlier time slots for watching because it's better for guests as well so you know um, you know let us let us know about that and yeah like I always say hope to see you someday in the black <laughs>